Hello, puppies and kittens. Welcome to another episode of Blasphemer's Bible. And we are getting into Exodus. We only made one chapter last week, so we're going to be trying to be a little bit more efficient this time around and save all our bullshit stories of bravado and combat for after the show, maybe. <laughs> so, who wants to begin? Anybody have something to say? I took that personally, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I found my uh I found my my duct tape bible for this this week. So Yay! I yes, I got it back and I have to say I love Exodus. I love how ridiculously fragmented it is in terms of like authorship sources and this is just one way to break it down like all the different colors are all over the place. Um something like Deuteronomy is fairly consistently pretty much all made up by that one priest who raised the child king josiah but this this is uh this is a very interesting patchwork so that's always a fun uh, the debates over which patch came from where how or no doubt long and we won't get into that but it's it's interesting to note exactly how fragmented a work exodus is <laughs> Uh, before we start to, I have a suggestion connected to the stuff I was saying before we started. Uh, uh, there's a Christian uh, person here. Uh, I would suggest that if we have questions for him to do it in the context of Exodus. So that way we can finish <laughs> you know, this chapter or, or I don't know. How are we going to do today? Two, one or two? We we're going to try see. to crank out at least two chapters, I would think. Two. And they're okay. pretty they're pretty meaty it's uh yeah. it's the introduction yeah. to the story of moses sort of his first half of his life kind of stuff um who are we having read today i started last time but i don't think i should do it again so i mean we do have xerxes here i can always yeah, he, you know get he has a narrator yeah. voice Xerxes yes, does I'm, I'm the Morgan voice. Freeman of the podcast. <laughs> so I, I suggested you two verses one to ten first. <clears throat> one through ten? Yes. Okay, yeah, that works. That's uh, that's the sectioning in my Bible. So here we go. The birth and youth of Moses. Now a man from the I house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch, and she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. Okay, um, so... Um, first, first on off, verse before, one, before, before uh, we, so we jump into does, that. does Moses mean pulled out of the water? Is that the actual translation? I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Hold on just a second. Get, if any, yeah. if any publishers right. are listening, hire Xerxes to read your audio book. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I might actually, cause I, I mean, I, I have ugh, so many like book ideas I actually want to write. Dude, I could use but, the fucking money. But hell yeah, I would definitely give <laughs> Xerxes to read the audio book. <laughs> oh, okay. I want to afford this so, motorcycle. Uh, Sixty thousand dollars. Jesus. Oof. Okay, maybe okay. I don't want to pay you. You do something irresponsible <laughs> with that money. <laughs> okay, for the record, it's purple. That thing is badass. So oh, yeah. okay. it is. Oh, she is, she so. fine. She fine. She finer than the baby Moses. <laughs> oh. I always loved about this story how <laughs> Moses' mom gets paid to take care of him and <clears throat> under protection. I'm like, I mean, giving up your child is bad. Giving them up to a you know a, someone in a palace not necessarily as bad, but also you know especially during genocide. But uh, you know, getting paid to take care of your kid, I, I approve this message. 
Okay, uh, so I'll start with, ver with verse one. So uh, in the NIV, it reads, uh, married a Levite woman. Um, and in the KJV, it's a daughter of Levi. So, and in the Bible, it's a specific woman. It's like, it's almost like the name, uh, daughter of Levi, but Levi is like a name. So it, uh, so it's kind of like the two and took the daughter of Levi, but not exactly. And the Septuagint uh, reads, who took one of the daughters of Levi? And Nachmanides <laughs> writes that the reason their names are not mentioned is to avoid tracing the genealogy and mentioning who their ancestors were up to Levi. So just skipping a bit. Fair enough. And yeah, I mean, versus, no, go on. I was, yeah, so Vess, do you not want to mention the story that Rashi brings down about, about like the idea that they separated and then remarried? Or... No, I, I actually don't know so... about this story. Oh, okay, so the, the idea was that because of the, the first um, decree to kill the children, um, the men decide, the, the Hebrew men decided that they would separate from their wives to stop having babies. And, uh, and then uh, Miriam, the, 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 the sister of Moses, uh, told, her, told her father, you're making a, uh, you know, Pharaoh's decree was evil, but your one is more evil because it's stopping any girls from being born as well. And, uh, and so he took her advice. That's why it says, I mean, this is the story, you know, this is an interpretation, right? And that's why it says, and the man went and he took, uh, took the daughter, uh, married the daughter of Levi, which, and that this story kind of implies that they remarried, they got back together and then she had, uh, Moses. So that's, so she, he actually had, you know, there's two older siblings, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so they were married before they were born before, and then they separated, they came back together and then they had Moses. Um, Moses. yeah, it's an interesting mm. little story. Um, yeah. And this, uh, uh sorry, I, I'm going to let Tomer finish up, uh, his, uh, Oh yeah, and uh, the woman is 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 Yocheved, or I don't know how you say it in English. Jo Jochebed, I think. Jochebed, Yochebed, or Jochebed, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good old and English she's the princess. actual. She's she's the daughter of of Levi that is mentioned when they're doing the counting. Like, why is there, why is it seventy? Mm -hmm. Even though if you count them all up, it's seventy-one because she was the one who was born when they were like going through the wall. <laughs> so you would she's... hope this was a granddaughter, because I don't know how she's having children 400 years later with someone so it who... says that she's 130 years old at the time. <laughs> and that they, they were there. So she was born when they came into Egypt between the walls. And they were there for 210 years total. And when they left, Moses was 80. So he was born when she was 130. Why um, Why does it say so many places, though, that they were there for 400 years? So oh, there's a prophecy uh, thing. No, no, isn't there a, no, it's not. Isn't there also there's a prophecy, a... like God says to Abraham, that your descendants will be in Egypt for yeah. 400 years? Could um, this not also be part of the fact that the for that as well. ages were different also at certain points, at certain times, time periods? Uh, like, what was it like... Uh, what Adam was supposed to have been like what nine hundred or something like that years old, but it actually wasn't that. It was more like if you took like sixty or the zero out or whatever it was, it was more like you know eighty nine to one hundred years old or something like that. So, so my question is, is that perhaps kind of two ways of looking with at this. it. Either, I can't remember what it's called, gave, but either but yeah. they believe the ancients lived too long years, <clears> or it's possible that they because they took uh, like uh, king lists and stuff from the Sumerians, mm -hmm. and the Sumerians used like a base. 60 number system that yeah the yeah, translation like what, what, of the numbers kind some of some kings live like what ten thousand years or something like that if i recall or they live yeah, that time. Yeah, and there were different there's three ridiculous there's three numbers. like successive generations in the sumerian king list and all and the older you go back the mm -hmm. longer they live so they, mm -hmm. they live like thousands of years in the oldest generation and then they live a few hundred years in the middle generation and then they're they're old but not stupidly impossible old, not Dracula old in the in the more recent generation. Yeah, I so wonder too if that was theme. like dynasties. You know, the, the Han dynasty runs for so many hundreds of years mm. because but that's not one person; that's a, a family dynasty, or you know, just the habit of mythologizing ancestors and compounding it, which you know, that's possible. A lot of that. Yeah, yeah the Bible kind of. 
I actually guys... really like. I don't know about the veracity, the truth value of this, but I really like the idea of it being uh, about dynasties. Uh, I feel like because of like the, you know comparing it to something that's at least kind of close uh, in in time and place, uh, Egypt, they have like since we have better records, we can have very clear chronologies or for the most part clear chronologies i want to say for the mm -hmm. most part uh and we can see when there's a co-regency and how long the dynasty lasted and stuff but if you didn't exactly have those kinds of annals at the time then you might just put it all into one dynasty mm -hmm. and put that under one ruler this the yeah. only problem with that of course is that it says that we've had civilizations that went back 30 to 40 to 50,000 years, which we don't have any evidence for yet. But it would be very, <laughs> very true. fascinating if that were the case. I well, yeah, it seems to be maybe... With the, the di three. with the dynasty thing, like maybe one person is standing for uh, his, his rule and the results of his rule for generations, but it also has kind of the earmarks of a tall tale, like... Uh, like uh, Paul Bunyan, forty foot yeah. tall, uh, Gets bigger, George bigger. Washington, Emperor Abraham Paul Lincoln Bunyan, can tell it alive. It does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, I want to point out that there was this uh, tradition in the ancient Near East about when you're writing a text, you take up the name of somebody who's who is meant to represent a certain idea mm -hmm. rather than uh, direct authorship. So, for example, whenever we read wisdom literature that is associated with solomon in the ancient world it's because he was the wise man he was the wise like that was his thing it was being wise so in wisdom literature very often you see attributions to someone like solomon even though it's very obvious it was not written by solomon so uh that solomon is also example. had a thing for boobies don't we all? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah. also, I know somebody is going to bring this up. Maybe uh, Arn brought up the Sumerian kings list. What about the similarity between this story of him being drawn from the water and Sargon of Akkad? I would like to actually cover that. Okay, if I can. Uh, so the similarity that exists there is, it's yeah, just exactly as you said being put into this basket and being drawn up out of the water later. And that was the, a way to be uh, saved, essentially. Um, so the story itself, as we have it from uh, Sargon of Akkad, is presented as an autobiography. And there are, while that is, in fact, a parallel, there are also, as pointed out by Sarna, who, like I said, I'm not a big fan of. So when I quote him, that's, uh, that's saying something. Uh, <laughs> He points out that while that is, in fact, a similarity, there are many, many differences as well. Uh, there, uh, like in that story, uh, I think it's a, uh, let's see, I actually have that somewhere here. If you would like, I can read the whole thing. Uh, it's not super long. Uh, One chapter it is today, I guess. <laughs> I'm not going to read it. Okay, fine. I won't read the whole thing. But uh, uh, the thing is, there are definitely some differences here. Uh, so Sargon is exposed to the river because he is the unwanted child of an illicit relationship. His mother belongs to a class of priestesses that is supposed to live in chastity and is forbidden to bear children. She therefore needs to conceal the birth and to dispose of the baby as quickly as possible in order to avoid the shame and disgrace that would be her lot should her offense be uncovered. Uh, and of course, this is different from the Moses story. Uh, so while I do want to point out that the similarity is in fact there uh, and the thing is, the similarity actually pops up in other places as well. Um, Who so draws think, uh, Sargon out, though? Is oh, it also well, a I princess or? I think that's his. Uh, shit, wrong book. Uh, I think that was it. His mom. Uh, hold up. It's it's definitely. In the meantime, can I continue my uh, yeah, commentary? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, do fast too. But I just want to say that um, the parallel isn't as tight as a lot of people. Uh, portray it as some people well. when they see sourcing of obviously some common roots they tend to claim that this whole thing has just been copy pasted into the bible and it's never as simple as that you know yeah. you've got multiple sources you've got popular stories and themes and they flow together and are adapted by people to their needs over the years and so there you know is there similarity in sourcing yes it's but it doesn't mean someone just you know 
Control C. Oh, it was, control it was some B. guy called. It was some guy called Aki. 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 It, it, so it's when the when the movie Aki, the drawer of water yeah. lifted me mm -hmm. out as he dipped his ewer. Uh, when the movie Independence Day came out, I, I remember reading this article that was showing how there was, while it, it seems like an original movie in its entirety, every trope in that movie had already existed in like three other books or movies prior to that, every bit of it. So like yeah, there's, there's nothing, you, you can't say that this movie necessarily copied another movie, but yeah, it did actually copy like 30 other movies. And, Go far uh, enough back. Every song has been copied. Every story has been copied at some form or another. I mean, it's not yeah, word for word. Everything's the same. It, it's hmm. not word for word the same story, but Sargon of Akkad, seventh century BC, BC, right? And uh, also Sumerian, still the same region, Mesopotamian. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they they must okay. have heard the story before. Probably yeah, and there was another story oh, yeah. as well. But uh, go ahead, Tomer. I think you want to. Okay, uh, so verse, before I get to verse 2, I wanted to point out that in verses 2 and 3, at least in the Hellenistic literature, both parents are, be are being referred to and not just the mother. For example, the Septuagint translates the phrase, when she saw that he was a fine child, uh, it translates to, when they saw it was, so han it was handsome, also they sheltered it, and they could hide it no longer. Philo, in On the Life of Moses, chapter 1, also refers to both parents. And Josephus, in Antiquities of the Jews, Book 2, Chapter 9, writes that during the pregnancy of Jochebed, Amram, the father, prayed to God, and when he was revealed to him in a dream and told him about the child who will be born and of his expected future. <laughs> and verse, now verse 2. Uh, she saw he was a fine child. So Chazal in the Talmud, Sata 12a, wrote that when he was born, the whole house became filled with light. Now, Kamanides writes that all mothers love their children, whether they are pretty or not, and all of them who would hide them. He explains that the phrase, for he was good, in Hebrew, kitovhu, means that she saw in him some unique quality, which, in her opinion, foreshadowed that a miracle would happen to him, and he would be saved. So some sign or signification mm -hmm. of divine providence. And, I mean, no I think... doubt every mother thinks their baby is the prettiest and the best, and all that but yeah it's i guess it, yeah, it's a bit of a confirmation up. bias you know this mother made it work i, I like how I, it all religious thinking seems to be binary uh, just on everything you're either pretty or you're not it's a yes or no question <laughs> and, i mean and, and um, li, li, the way Lilith the... put it you know pretty est okay so there is a scale then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah the, so the chazal you said the chazal said that if the house filled up with light, but there's another yes. opinion by Chazal, which was that he was born circumcised. <laughs> of course he was. Ouch! Of course he was. Um, Let me just pull him out. Oops, I grabbed the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Kid. <laughs> she saw that he was good. So they snip. What you're saying is they snipped the umbilical cord a little closer than they should have. <laughs> uh, that, either that was uh, Friar Tuckman or something like that. Probably got uh, <laughs> got involved there. I don't think they. I don't um, think they cut the umbilical cords. Back then, yeah. really, they chewed them. No, I think you would. They would yeah, wait yeah. until the placenta was delivered, and then it would uh, fall off. I think cutting it is a more modern practice, as far as I'm. You aware. have to tie it off at least. Or, I don't know. I've heard that not like, cutting at some point, like you don't necessarily have yeah, to cut man. it right yeah. close to, uh, but yeah, cutting at some point in the cord. Yeah, yeah. Um, is is I think pretty pretty typical throughout human history, but. Yeah. Proof that God exists because he must have a belly button too. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so who's his mama? Um, anyway. So verse Sophia. three. Uh, ah. Okay. Uh, verse three, a papyrus basket. Uh, in Hebrew, it's tevat gome. And the basket is also a reference to the Noah's Ark because uh, the, the Ark is called teva as well. And here yeah. it's yeah. also teva. A box. Uh, yeah, oh. the gome is identified as Cyprus papyrus, which was widely cultivated in the Nile Delta in ancient times and was used to create baskets, shoes, and even boats. Reed mm. baskets have always been a thing, you know? It's also it's similar reed. to the... I, maybe this is the same thing you guys were talking about, I can't remember, but it's those round boats that were in, I think, Iraq or Iran. You think um, of a coracle? Yeah, 
that was like uh, for a long time possibly considered the origin of the story of the arc perhaps and when we get to that point i think that it would be a really interesting thing to look up because there's lots of evidence to show that that probably might be the case if it happened it would be of course at a local level only but uh yeah i think i think i wonder if that's the same type of thing for um for the other <clears throat> flood story mm -hmm. Noah's the other flood story yeah well Noah's there, story. there yeah. was one no, no. origin story with a barge that was commandeered during a flood and it would have been more sort of round and flat i guess it would have been a river barge yeah, and just i think what's the what's the other the other flood story that's famous um uh the was uh, 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 yes. 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 yes so i think the story yes. of gilgamesh it probably was most like a visual is there's a coracle like a round boat but yeah well, you, when, you, is, when you compare the, the epic of gilgamesh the there there's a numa elish and the epic of gilgamesh and the epic of actor uh, mm -hmm. and uh, most of these right. will make reference to either the city of Shuripak or to Ziasudra specifically. So this, this event was based on, evidently, was based on the flood of Shuripak around 2900 BCE. Ziasudra is has got a coracle. He's got his his livestock in the coracle, and he's punting mm -hmm. it down to down to market essentially. The river floods kind of dramatically. The depth of the flood is exactly what's reported in the Bible. It's 15 cubits or 22 feet. Archaeologists have since confirmed that this flood happened at that depth at that time. Ziyad Sudra gets, gets washed out into, uh, into the Persian Gulf and where his punting stick no longer will suffice. <laughs> you know, and so... That's what that's the, apparently the origin of that story. The thing that impressed me about that was, you know, there, there was a number of people that were saying you're being entirely speculative. But when you compare Gilgamesh and Atrahasis and Enuma Elish, they are making references to Zia Sudra and Shuripak. Yeah, I did. And there's evidence that that, that flood that wrong, actually so. occurred at that time in that location. Yeah, it was and lo the exactly. stories... local flood. I don't want to diverge too much from what we're doing in Exodus here, but I want to add just one last thing also. This is very important to remember that in this time period and for the most part of history, most people did not travel past 10 miles beyond their home village of their birth. They would die or they live, grow and die in their area within about 10 miles. Most people did in history. We know this from archeology. span So to think that the entire world was flooded, well, from that person's point of view, yeah, I can understand that. So if you keep that in, in, that, in context, that area, it makes so much more sense. In that area. Civilization. Like that, in that area, having a flood in the depth of 22 feet would have obscured all the houses and most of the trees exactly. and even the hillsides. Exactly. Um, guys, I'm sorry that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being rude, but no, that, we're, we're that talking about Exodus 2, not Genesis 6. Yeah, That's yeah. Was yeah the, the only thing I was going to say, and I wanted to get back to this. Yeah, so the, connect, the, the other connection is uh, between this box and... The, the, that's the, the connection the, arc the ark of the covenant is that it's um the 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 ark is covered in on the outside and the and the inside no, with both gopher. Pitch. Uh, pitch and pitch no, no. and clay but here the inside is with clay and the outside is with with tar okay. yeah that's, that's kind of Russia, a, I think, not the truman interesting i think kind the translations change i mean clay and tar pitch and bitumen whatever you want to say yes Okay. But yeah, the, the 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 one that doesn't smell so bad on the inside, <laughs> the one that smells bad on the outside, so that the baby. Right. I'm going to try to get through the nice comments too. that have accumulated here. So, uh, Officer Crown says, "Could the Bible actually be allegory? Even Jesus spoke in parables." Yeah, most of it. Why yeah, not? it depends on what part you're talking about, but uh, yeah, yeah the, these are mythological accounts of a nation. Uh, at least the part that we're in right now. Once we get to the Deuteronomistic history, it's going to be a different story because that one is written like an ancient history. So, well, uh, Mighty Chicken also taught English. Allegory is a story that has some kind of uh, uh, meaning, and it's not meant to be. It it's not a factual story, but it's telling some story. Like the Garden of Eden story could be mm -hmm. telling a story about the end of innocence rather than an actual Adam and Eve thing. Mm -hmm. But, historical uh, fiction, if you want to think of it that way, could be also not, considered from that too. But not every story in here reads like an allegory, like it's trying to tell us some profound truth. Like this particular story, what kind of profound truth is it telling us, really? Yeah, it's it's a mixture of fantasy, folklore, myths, and legends. There are fables in here. There's there is histor historical fiction, 
and then there's fictional history. Yeah. Alanis attests, lists. Even uh, Alanis attests says, thank you, Lilith, for pointing out that it's not copy paste. I've heard this argument so many times and most accept, most expect simple plagiarism. Sometimes it's difficult to explain evolution. Yep. Got it. Mm-hmm. And then kicker white lion offers 50 check Kroner says, are you trying to tell me that people mythicize the origins of their nation? I am shocked. Well, not that shocked. <laughs> Give this After all, your- Romulus and Remus were totally raised by a wolf. She wolf. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Then and they went Wander, forth to conquer the Federation. Says, uh, is, the, is the Pharaoh from Exodus 2 the same Pharaoh from the rest of the story? Was Moses outliving every Pharaoh? I think it is, it is implied, but it's not specific. It doesn't We're specifically gonna... say this is a new Pharaoh. It, so it, it, it's an In every it's movie a, version, it's the, the next Pharaoh. Pharaoh. We're going to have another, we're gonna have another um, verse where it's ambiguous, whether it's a new Pharaoh arises or it's the same one. Oh. Okay. And then we got one more comment. Trevor and Wright says, is, is Moses in the Bible very similar to the New Testament Jesus when referring to them being persecuted before being born? And weren't both of these names common to people in that region? Yeah, that was a it was a direct the Jesus story was a direct uh reference to, to this event. Yeah. Well the math and there's also the in theory, chapter yeah. I think in chapter three there is a reference of Moses being a shepherd, which I'll talk about. Uh but for but uh, let's go back, back to this chapter. Uh, verse 5, Pharaoh's daughter. So Chazal in Leviticus Rabbah 1.3 identified uh, Pharaoh's daughter as Bithia, who appears in First Chronicles 4.18. Uh, they also wrote that her husband M- Mered was Caleb, son of uh, Jephunneh, who also appears in this verse. However, the Book of Jubilees 47.7 and Josephus in Antiquities 9.5 called her Thermothis the Greek name for Renenutet, the Egyptian snake deity. Aaron? Mm. Ooh. And speaking yeah, of cool. which, Minute Rice offers $5 and says, I wish to contribute to the snake fund. Yay! Also, this show is cool too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. What, what, was the, what was the Greek name again, Tomer? Uh, re, uh, Thermotis. 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 That could be a good snake name. Yeah, yeah that's Thermotis. what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. We'd just call him Phil or Monty. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Monty Python. Oh, Monty the Python. Python. Ah! it's right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Monty gosh. the Python. Monty the Python. Um, oh. Okay, verse 7. Hebrew women that to nurse the, most the baby. unoriginal name. <laughs> so Rashi comments that Pharaoh's daughter had handed Moses to many Egyptian women to suckle him, and he had refused to take suck because he was destined to hold <laughs> converse with the Shekinah, whatever that means. Uh, Shekhuni writes, yeah, the Shekinah, the, 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 the uh, Glory yeah, yeah. Holy Spirit. Yes, mm. yes, yeah. yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I like, how, how the... Tomer, I like how Tomer mispronounced the Hebrew word, not me. And then, he, and then he said, whatever that means. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I think, no, I no, no, no. I meant to say what the, uh, he was distant to hold Congress, English. what this means. What, like, how is that connected to it? I don't know. How is he supposed um, to so, suckle the Holy Spirit? I No, it's just how, how it connects. That, that's what I was saying. Wasn't yeah. he uh, given uh, in the story later to a, a Hebrew nursemaid? And yes, his mother. Uh, mother. Yes, his mother. I was, I was uh, reading I, you, Tomer. That was not a serious criticism. That, that's <laughs> fine. Um, but I haven't finished. So Chiskuni writes that Egyptian wet nurses would refuse to nurse Hebrew children. And Sfona writes that the Hebrew's milk is more fitting for his temperament. <laughs> okay. What is, is, what is that? Kosher? Bitter? What? <laughs> what, what? What is the milk with the temperament? Thing. <laughs> that sounds, it sounds for, uh, it's, like, no it's well, just a little salty it well, sounds a bit like xenophobic sort of like you know yeah. people are pe- people living in different temperate regions have different you know you shouldn't share milk between them sounds almost yeah, like that it does. <clears throat> people and finally two back it, then shock of shocks yeah and finally I'm verse 10 rain. about the <laughs> thank you Lily. about the name <laughs> Um, the name Moses. So in Hebrew, it's Moshe. And the etymology of the name possibly derives from the Egyptian. Uh, Philo, on the origin of 
uh, sorry, follow in On the Life of Moses, book one, chapter four, writes that the name derives from the Egyptian Coptic word for water, mo'u. Josephus, mm -hmm. in Antiquities, book two, chapter nine, writes that the second element, esis, meant those who are saved. Another possibility is from the Egyptian root msy, children of, as seen in names like Thutmosis, child of thought, and Ramesses, child of Ra. Interesting. Child of the water? Yeah, it'd be... Like drawn out of child also, of sounds similar as well. It also would be kind of weird to... Because uh, there are a few hypotheses here, right? So we have an Egyptian etymology, we have a Hebrew etymology, uh, we have another one that uh, the Torah pointed out. And the the thing is, there's really no consensus on where this would have come from. If you uh, take this story uh, more literally, then you're more likely to you know take the, it's an Egyptian name. Mm -hmm. uh, but if not, you're more likely to take the, it's a Hebrew name. But also uh, when it comes to like Semitic languages in, in general, um, there are definitely a lot of similarities uh, between them. So, like, the definition could be, like, within this ballpark, but uh, not uh, not exactly that definition, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Um, I would also add that several traditional commentators have asked how Pharaoh's daughter could have known Hebrew, because that's a Hebrew name. <laughs> sure, uh, yeah. Ibn Ezra writes that either she had learned Hebrew or she asks someone to transliterate the Hebrew name from an Egyptian name. Hiskuni writes that either Jacobet named him or that Pharaoh's daughter converted to Judaism by immersing herself, herself in the Nile. Yeah, that's the... Is it, not, yes. is, is it really such a mystery that, like, uh, Egyptians would know or that some Egyptians would know Hebrew? I mean, you know, there's a whole bunch of Texans that speak Spanish. They were the majority. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's more likely uh, that you know the Hebrews, you know, in this mythology, yeah. being the subjugated race, would have been forced to learn the language of their captors um, and masters. But you know, it's it, honestly this was written so far afterwards that it's it yeah. you know that alone would account for simply updating the name and sort of coming yeah. up with Yeah, whoever wrote this, they, they they had Hebrew knowledge, so it to me it makes no sense that, they, that also, they named it after it's... I feel like the people who wrote it would have also had knowledge of Egyptian enough to, well, they knew about Pharaoh, for example, uh, being the name for the king, and they knew about different city names. Um, so they might have known a bit of Egyptian as well, um, especially as Egyptian would have been a very important language, I think, at the time, at least. Well, Egypt, the Egyptian Empire was still strong at, the, at that point. I don't. I doubt that it's hmm. contemporary, though. That the no. the Pharaoh's daughter actually knew Hebrew in real life, because there's there's not really good evidence that there was this occupation and there's this no happened. evidence that any of this happened yeah. in real life. No. But there is. Um, we've talked about the uh, the sort of harmonization with the and the mythologizing sort of reflecting coming out of Egypt with coming out of Babylon with Ezra and Nehemiah uh, being like Moses and Aaron and sort of reflecting this mythology back. And I wonder if um, an element of that might also be a condemnation of those who to escape Babylon went down to Egypt. Uh, what who, which prophet was it who got dragged along with them? Was it Ezekiel? I can't remember. Wait, was it Jeremiah? It was oh, Jeremiah. no, it was Jeremiah. Yeah, that yeah. sounds right. Um, but, or, sorry, Jeremiah, yeah. Uh, but because um, there was a group of them that did that uh, during the whole time of the tumults with them, and they would try to look to Egypt for help and all that stuff during some of these um political machinations. So yeah, I don't know. I'm wondering if that might have been included in that as sort of a, you know, do not go back to Egypt because that's where we came out of last time. Is this what Lawrence is always talking about, the Babylonian exile period? Oh, and maybe got mashed together? <laughs> yeah, that is what I'm always talking about. Yes, yeah. always. Well, Gosh. As far as we know, that's when this was compiled, even if not when all of it was written. So, um, or the return from the exile period, and it would have you know, figuring it into their new mythology would have been a real important thing. So, yeah. 
I got another comment here. Mark Smith, member for one month, offers five dollars and says, "Here's a fiver for a treat or a toy for the big white god that occasionally annoys Aaron." <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna uh, guess there, talk about you, Fluffy. Yeah. So there's an interesting there's an interesting Billy, he speaks that, to you. There's an interesting bit just that Rashi brings down about um verse five, um, where it says that she sent her maidservant to fetch the basket. So the midrash is uh, um the sages try and interpret the the word that is used there is amata, which means her maidservant, but it could also it's also similar to mod like the, the word ama it also means like a cubit. So they kind of interpret it as rather than she sent her maidservant, she stretched out her hand and her hand grew multiple cubits to reach the basket. Okay. So if you're growing up, like we used to have, you know, coloring books and stuff. So there was always that picture of her with like a really long arm. Oh my you, God. You, you can tell her what? apart from the other because she's, she's wearing like a spandex jumpsuit with a big number four on it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> How can people believe this shit? That's so freaking I weird. It's transcendental drawing of like you know where you you Come you look on. like your arm is giant because you reach forward you know and then they decided that that was a physical reality and not a. No, I, I don't know. I mean, there, there, there is this there is, like this last is there is a tradition that she's supposed Man. to be like a, a right. Right, I got another comment. And the bathing was her actually going down to like remove herself from idol worship and stuff and yeah that could make sylvia, <laughs> June, uh, sylvia george pentelemon says a uh, question for lawrence i heard there were non-canonical stories about moses in some conquests in ethiopia do the stories exist or was that just marketing for the ten commandments movie uh i think that may have been from like a midrash or something Don't i'm not ask entirely me. sure hmm. Maybe we'll maybe when we'll get to that, I'll I'll find Are it. Are they talking about the Nubians specifically, Nubian Empire? Is that what they're talking about? Yeah, I mean, Kush is normally identified with Ethiopia, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, wait, did you not hear what I said? Or yeah. he said it was a Midrash, yeah. Yeah, I think it's from Midrash. Uh, oh, okay, but so maybe quick question, maybe I'll find Homer it Isaac. Uh, the Talmud. What percentage of it is fan fiction? Ten uh, percent. <laughs> 90 percent uh, is about law i think yeah, that makes sense. from what i've read yeah you can buy like they do have a, a book i think it's i can't remember what it's called but it's literally just all the agada or stories from the from the, the book Talmud of agada in, like one book but if it's What's about it? sorry religion, it's the Allah. book of agada <clears throat> no but i think it's called like in or something and people read it maybe like, as a maybe as a, like, i a don't i don't remember the, i don't know the name especially if someone took the whole talmud and called out every story and put it into it and printed it in one book. Um, that so it's just like lots of fun stories. <laughs> I think that I think that yeah, I think compile. I don't know. I don't. Remember. I think I mentioned my favorite, my favorite uh, Agada, which was the the one where like the guy was on the, on the ship and the, the the sea was lit up and he asked the sailors what it is and they said it's the eye of the Le Leviathan. I think Ooh. we should move on with our commentary. Though. Yeah, we should move <laughs> on. Right. Yes, yes. Uh, so can. read the next. Uh, um, read 11 verses. to 11 to 21. The show can read to the end. Yeah. Who's yeah. reading? You should read to the end as well. Xerxes. Is it Xerxes? <laughs> Xerxes. Yeah, so if, we, if we go Xerxes. all the way to 25, we don't leave like an awkward four verses at the end there. Okay. Oh, okay. If you want, uh, uh, yeah. verse 20, get yeah. to 20, verse 21. Okay. Yeah, it's only two, like three more verses. Uh, yeah. But really yeah, quickly, let, I dropped him, a poll. Let him finish it up. <clears throat> I, yeah, I, we'll I dropped a poll in the chat about how in the next chapter I should read the voice of God. And so far, Morgan Freeman is winning. So we'll see what well, happens. Well, he is God. <laughs> oh, that's such a cliche. So, yeah. Uh, it's a real one. One day, after Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and saw their forced labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his kinsfolk. He looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. When he went out the next day, he saw two Hebrews fighting, and he said to one who was in the wrong, Why do you strike your fellow Hebrew? He answered, Who made you a ruler and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, Surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh. He sat on the land of Midian and sat down by a well. The priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came to draw water and filled the troughs of water for their father's slock the father's flock 
But some shepherds came up and drove them away. Moses got up and came to their defense and watered their flock. When they returned to their father, Ruel, he said, How is it that you have come back so soon today? They said, An Egyptian helped us against the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Where is he? Why did you leave the man? Invite him to break bread. Moses agreed to stay with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zipporah in marriage. She bore a son, and he named him Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien residing in a foreign land. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, they cry for help rose up. Uh, out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, because you forgot. God looked up the Israelites, and God took notice of them. Can someone just get God some okay. sticky notes? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was there like a massive time skip there, or was that just me? Oh yeah, though there was a there was a pretty big ma- time skip. Like, after many ten, days, but yeah. it's five. Oh, no, it feels like years. Like in adulthood, like, had a daughter, and then this thing happened, and this person died. What like what? Twenty years in like three seconds? This is in adulthood. Yeah, yeah like the thing is, they're they're not going over his childhood. Yeah, this is. I don't think it's that long. I don't yeah, think at Gary one point, well, yeah, that, that long. I shouldn't say that, but jeez, I mean. Um. Okay. I'm not doing one of the uh, stuff, verse, right? <laughs> verse eleven. He saw an Egyptian beating a, her, a, a Hebrew. So Rashi comments, the Hebrew was the husband of Shelomith, the daughter of Dibri from Leviticus 24, 4, 24, 11. And the Egyptian taskmaster had set his fancy upon her. During the night, he compelled her, him, i.e. her husband, to rise and made him leave the house. He, however, returned, uh, sorry, he, however, returned, entered the house and forced his attentions upon the woman. And she believing it was her husband. The man returned and because... Uh, Sorry. The man returned and became aware of what had happened, and when the Egyptian perceived that he was aware of it, he beat him and flogged him the whole day long. (laughs) Well, that's a lovely story, because, you know, we couldn't just leave it with the normal story. We have to add the abuse and subjugation of women in. Oh, we have to. That's that's Yeah, I don't know why why there had to be a story for that bit, but yeah, why not? (laughs) Um, verse 13, two Hebrews fighting. So according to, to the Talmud, Nedarim 64b, these are Dathan and Abiram, who are described in Numbers 16, verses 1 and 3, as part of the people who opposed Moses and Aaron. Hmm. Ah, so they were already bad eggs. Yes. Yeah, th- these, are the, this, these are the Laman and Lemuel of the Exodus story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple of those in my fridge um, the other day. Just float them in water. Uh, they, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, now, verse 16, a priest of Midian had seven daughters. So this is the only place in the Bible where it is said that somebody had seven daughters. Uh, seven sons are described in Job 1, 2 and 42, 13. Uh, usually three daughters are mentioned because three is a t- typological number that represents perfectness. Or even 30 daughters know. in Judges 12, 9. Elsewhere in the Bible, for, for example, 1 Samuel 2, 5 and Jeremiah 15, 9, there is a mention of seven children without describing if they are boys or girls. I, I could swear there was... Isn't there a story of uh, the daughters of uh, Tzlaf, Tzlafachad or something like that? I think in Numbers, so they, they, right? That they, they yeah, and they like they complain that they don't get an inheritance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Had no it? brothers, but I believe there were three Maybe of there's them. six of them. Oh. Or I thought may, there were seven. Maybe. Let me Maybe let me try to six. read a couple of five, comments five. here. There were five. Oh, right there oh it's five. Ones. Okay. All right. So Anton Gomez, hello Anton, says, "Would Moses really have been killed in all seriousness? I think his crime might have been swept under the rug, like with most politicians." Well, considering that in the context of the story, he wasn't I like. Uh, I mean, the thing is, he's 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 running away for a reason, right? He's a member of Pharaoh's household, but we don't actually know. Usually in the movies, they set him up as a prince. Uh, but a member of Pharaoh's household could mean any number of, you know, hierarchical positions. And depending on the status of the Egyptian killed, maybe it would be swept under the rug. Maybe it wouldn't. I yeah. mean, yeah. nepotism. I just is like to bring up that Moses, Moses somehow knew that it was wrong to murder, just as Cain knew that it was wrong to murder, even though there was as yet no commandment against that. That's impossible. There, the Ten Commandments are wrong. People like, people like Dennis Prager say that without the Ten Commandments, murder isn't wrong. Was, murder is wrong. wrong was watching. Watching. That's how it works. No one was watching, so he was able to kill them. <laughs> so. Murder isn't wrong in the Bible unless God commands it. 
Dennis Prager I, is. I can't. I can't do a Dennis Prager voice. I tried, but it just made me want to. Oh, moment, so. I, I can't. I, I need an oven mitt if we're going to talk about Dennis Prager because <laughs> I'm now. I got that backwards. Pardon. Okay. And then oh, Minute Rice offers five dollars and says, "Here, have another fiver for the on-screen danger noodle." I, I noticed yeah, behind me baby. that my 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 false water cobra was nudging against the door, <laughs> trying to trying to get the door open. So I'm like, "Okay, if you want to come out, you'll come out." I always All get right, his name so, wrong. I it, I always call him a bath or a both. Abba, Abba, like like the group, <laughs> the musical group, Abba. <laughs> All right, so then Arjan offers 5.99 euro. It says, I wonder why God didn't uh, publish the Bible together with a clear commentary. The more you dig, the bigger the mess. He didn't publish it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he outsourced to ghostwriters um, and uh, when got high on a burning bush, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> I don't see a public Chris Mark on here anywhere. I mean, this is open source as far as I'm concerned, which is why we have so much uh, bullshit in it. Ar I have Arn, an author's autograph copy. It's the Wikipedia of God. Arn, it's, it's <laughs> <Okay. €5> €5.99. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. I was being American. <laughs> okay, so then Just Keep Going says, for Arn, are you ever going to adopt out any hatchlings, maybe a herp group? garden of the serpents or something like that i'd oh, love to purchase my pets from you unorthodox exotics is is the name we're going with but i kind of like garden of the serpents so yep, um, yes okay we, we so, will have babies um, for this thing eventually as soon as i can find a mate for him who is your baby <laughs> right Fast back seven, to the bible okay. um Look, yes uh okay. first, first okay. no go ahead Oh, I thought we were uh, we're not done with the commentary yet. No, no, uh, for, yeah. For I finally, I have a uh, uh, yeah for Tsipoa uh, uh, in verse twenty one. This is it, uh -huh. uh, the name is the female form of the noun for bird, which is Tsipo. Uh, according to Exodus uh, Rabba uh, one thirty two, she was named Tsipoa because she cleansed the house like a bird, i.e. Mm -hmm. A bird that collects the slightest crumb from the ground, or oh. that she cleansed the house from idolatry by offering the blood of a bird as atonement. Uh, okay. You know, either Zippo. or. Zippo Ra, huh? So she's Ra Zippo? Yeah. She must be hot. I, uh, I'd i like to point Zippo. out something here. Zippo. See, this yeah. is very important yeah. to make a note of because I will be coming back to it in future verses. These are the Midianites. Moses comes out of the desert running away as a fugitive with nothing but the clothes on his back as far as we can tell and he is taken in by them fed taken into the family given a wife a job clothes everything he needs um food when he is hungry water when he is thirsty uh clothing for his nakedness everything from the matthew list of things you have to do and let us see how Moses and God repays that treatment to the Midianites in future verses. Yeah. Just make a note. <laughs> oh, I would I, I could I will also add that in verse 22 the name Gershom is a combination of the words Ger and Sham. Uh says the uh, I have been a stranger in a foreign land that's JPS the stranger is Ger and Sham yes. means there he, uh, there or here, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, there. So the name yeah. Gershom means stranger there. Yeah, the word ger is also used in in Judaism to refer to a convert. So yes, uh, and it. Okay, are we ready to go to the um, uh, the burning bush? Not, not yet. Quite. Um, oh, where's no. my burning bush? So, Shoot. Uh, first twenty. Uh, I think we all know what kind of burning bush that was. Wait, <laughs> wait Tomer, do wait, you have wait, anything wait, for wait. twenty three to twenty five or? No, I don't really. Have okay. It, but... So in verse 23, it says that after many days, uh, the king of Egypt died. And then it says the children of Israel groaned from the hard work. So the commentators were like, why would they have groaned from the hard work right after the king had died? Wouldn't that, that have been like a, a breath of relief, of, of relief? So they understood it, that it wasn't a, it wasn't a, um, wasn't a new king. It was that the king had been struck with leprosy. Oh, uh, yeah. To cure yeah. to cure his leprosy, he would um, bathe in the blood of murdered uh, Hebrew children. 
Yeah, oh, here you. we go again. I, you know, I would have thought yeah. just like the workload upped because they had to finish the tomb. I would have just figured Maybe. that. Like that. Yeah, but you know, this is a story. Uh, no, let's bathe in the. And there is another. Children. There is another wow. midrash. I don't remember exactly where it where it like where it becomes relevant, but there is another midrash that says that the the pharaoh of this of the Exodus story. He was a he was one amma tall. He was one cubit tall, one cubit wide and one cubit long. Hmm. So he was Very oddly that his penis was also decided... <laughs> Sorry? I, I, I don't remember. I, I remember he was a one cubit that, cubed. It says that, <laughs> that his penis was also the size of something like that. Or his be I don't wow. know yeah, yeah, so exactly. But I, I think there's one that... How many cubits did that one grow? <laughs> so either he was either he was a, like a cube. He was so like round, rotund that he was one armor, one armor, one armor. Or he was... Mm -hmm. One arm tall, one arm wide, and one arm long referred to his penis length. Interesting. This is yeah, so I remember as a I would also add I was thinking was of this inches tall. little squat cube thing in a blood of bar of blood. And I, I, so SpongeBob I would also add that Yeah, like I said, SpongeBob SquarePants got fat or Baron just got Harkonen. very thin and grew mm -hmm. a protrusion. Yeah. Ooh, Baron Harkonen, I nice would... reference. Yeah. My final comment here that, that uh, the story that Isaac told about baby, the the with baby's blood is all it also mm. appears in Targum Sudo Jonathan. So uh, that's of course it does. Yes, I think maybe the question was like, how many babies do you need to to bathe? And then it was like, you know, one of the kids in class would be like, yeah, but he wasn't very big, so you didn't need that many. Oh, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, let's move no. on. <laughs> um, with that, there's always this blood libel thing. That story, that trope that that mm. they, you bathe in the the blood of children we're still doing it today with q and you know that's the thing that makes you say hey these are evil people they deserve what they come into them where does it come from where does the idea that the blood of children is somehow rejuvenating or something uh it's just like, old i guess that's, it's that's, that's old in old, but... that is a trope that comes from a lot from parts of the world uh mm. that yeah i mean that origin is Ancient. Yeah, but I have nothing to add to this one, I'm afraid. Right. Well, I don't like smoking, so I'm celebrating the burning bush with an edible. There Hooray. you go. Hooray Congratulations. Oh, we did. And legalized we did a whole chapter in under an hour. Now, can I, we can I make some chapter... comments on, on uh, chapter two real quick? Yay, that's what I was going to ask. Yes, yes what please be Go ahead. I haven't heard a um, word from B-Town all day. Well, <laughs> <laughs> good to see you guys. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. Um, see. For me, you know, I learned about this years ago, but um, just as Isaac, I think, was saying, when it comes to the word ark here, this is the, there's only two places in the Bible where that specific word's used in Genesis with Noah's ark and then here. And there's this imagery being presented, as far as I can tell, about um, birthing. You see it patterned throughout scripture. Um, you know, we had a birth of a new world. With Noah here, we're going to have a birth of a nation. Um, recently, I think it was last night, I, sometimes I like to go into the Paleo-Hebrew. So this word for Teba, is that correct, Isaac, for the Ark? Um, teva. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, teva. Teva. Um, what you have is, I think it's a, a Tav, and then a Beit, and then a Tav. And the Paleo-Hebrew symbolism here, what you have is a cross. Well, you have um, a house inside two crosses and typically a house will signify um, like a son because he's going to be the continuation of the house, the seed. So I thought it was, it, it was, it was meaningful to me because I haven't, I've yet to make a tie to Jesus when it specifically, when it comes to the ark like this. And, you know, I have to say when I saw um, a son between two crosses that immediately was pressed upon me, I thought it was significant and, um, in a way, and I then, would say first of all, first of all, the the third letter wouldn't be a tough; it would be a hey. Yes, um, teva, which is also which in the Paleo Hebrew also kind of looks like a cross. I think is it like a is it a line with two cross beams? Maybe. Um, yeah, and, and maybe the the... also the cross that is like the letter tough, the cross. It's not, it's not a Christian cross. I mean, it's very much like a almost like a plus sign or. A, Trying to remember, actually. Letters are also letters. 
Leviathan. Well, it's yeah. where we it's where we get our letter T from. It has evolved and changed over time. Um, T so didn't I'm, I'm come pretty from sure the we cross. Found... That did not come from the yeah, cross. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a similar shape. Yeah, but no, um, it, it might. Def, first of all, the people who wrote this um, probably weren't writing in Paleo Hebrew because um, it would have been they would have been already have adopted the Aramaic uh, derived um, sort of modern block Hebrew script. Uh, B they wouldn't have seen any relevance to a cross. Uh, cross a cross is a very, you know, um, even in the time of the Romans, when they crucified people, it wasn't necessarily on a crucifix shaped uh, thing. Nope. It was um, angled like a V, actually. It was more yeah, or a T or whatever. Yeah. So, um, yep. Yeah, there wouldn't have been any, uh, it, they wouldn't have chosen a word because it looked like a cross as far as I'm aware. Like even if they were implying like something messianic, which there's no relevance at all to either. I mean, yes, you said about rebirth, like the first story is about the rebirth of the world. The second story is about rebirth of a nation. They might have wanting to allude to a, a third rebirth to do with something the Messiah. I don't think a, a crucifix or a cross is, is ever symbolic of the Messiah until after um the the gospels well and it's um, also I, a shape that it's inevitable you will run into um in yeah it's every, a very like the 9 11 cross well. yeah yeah it's oh, those two intersecting yeah. lines yeah if okay, it intersects yeah. so, uh, at, at, at right angles anywhere except at the ends <clears throat> it's going to be taken as a cross so i, I want to also clarify something yeah it's more of an um, x shape actually the, the I would execution that romans did in terms of that, it's either a V or, or an upside down V or be a cross like this, not a, like this, because putting that in the ground is extremely time consuming. And well, if you're a Roman soldier, you want to get back to your mess. You don't want to have to deal with that for a long time. So they just put it on two parts because two parts are a better location. Uh -huh. So that's actually how they would put that in the ground. And then they would actually post it up in the back. So you actually kind of have a, a bit of a back because you, your, your hands can be on a cross that way. So you'll see a lot of references to that if you look at Roman executions. The cross concept was a misinterpretation, what I believe, from the things that I've read. Um, that has kind of gone throughout the ages and then changed into what yeah. it is today. They actually may have had a more accurate representation of Roman crucifixion in a specific video game that I no longer have, um, <laughs> where they it was yeah. you know set in the northern realm of the Celts and mm -hmm. they were you know but yeah dissidents up on the X crosses and yep. I mean yep. the the so uh, yeah that's, so the three things the are... concept of burning crosses from the Celts and they also had X crosses that they would just light as signal fires because you know big mm -hmm. open wars. Yep. And if there were yes, letters uh, in this in this picture that resemble resemble an X cross, even be more accurate. Letters are X's. Just yeah. imagine how much our culture would be different if if this Jesus character was depicted as being mounted on an X cross. Mm -hmm. well, it, it what the letter tough looks like. Um, when, and the third thing I wanted to quickly say is that the idea that the house means it refers to a son is not a very it's not a simple direct line, you know, whenever you, uh, the symbol of a house can also mean son. I mean, uh, both the word, Hebrew word for father and the Hebrew word for son both contain the letter bet. Um, I, I have a and, very- And normally I would imagine it would refer to a father figure rather than a son. If, if it had, yeah, been, let me, let me if it had been an X cross, then uh, every railway crossing would be proof of God, I think. <laughs> And I would also like to remind you guys that we need to uh, go back to oh, the yeah. Bible. So maybe yeah, let, let me let me jump into the commentary. Uh, Trevor and Wright says, Tomer, do you know many different uh, Semitic languages existed, and also how far back, or, or how many? I guess is what it meant to say was how many different Semitic languages existed, and also how far back is the origins of the Hebrew language when compared to the other ancient Semitic languages? I don't know how, but. I think that Hebrew orig uh, originates from like uh, second millennia BCE. I think I don't. I but I I I don't yeah, know. I'm not like an expert on this. Yeah. So Hebrew. I mean, modern days there are you've got Semitic languages. You've got Hebrew, Arabic. You've got Syriac, which is like modern version of Aramaic. There's also uh, in Ethiopia they have South Semitic languages like Ge'ez. And Tigrina, I think that's also a, a, a Semitic language, but it might just be another Ethiopic language. And then also in Malta, Maltese is kind of like its own language, but it comes from Arabic. 
So those are the modern Semitic languages. And if you look at the history of language, Hebrew is comes from Canaanite, and Canaanite was like more Western uh, Semitic, um, like uh, it's very similar to Phoenician and the language that was spoken later in Carthage, uh, Punic, and Aramaic is like Eastern, um, East, Eastern, um, uh, Eastern Northern Semitic, but very, very similar to Hebrew, uh, but okay. with a lot, of, a lot of cognates, but pronounced sometimes I, I a lot of different to letters. Yeah. To, before we move on, that mm -hmm. I, I'm a former Christian, and I don't know that I ever retrofitted the Old Testament to find Jesus in it. So I, some people are saying uh, we're going off topic a little bit, but that's what it seems like P-Town is doing, trying to find Jesus in this Moses story. And mm. I don't know if I, I did that, but I would try to find where to confirm that some of the things in the Bible are true. Like there used to be the spam, one of the first earliest spams uh, emails that, that Joshua, the day the sun still not joshua i forget who it was the day the sun stood still on that battle uh oh, yeah, that was actually, joshua. yeah it was joshua okay so like and i was like wow but that's what but in another way as as a former christian you're looking for you instead of having faith you're you're looking to confirm something when when jesus said uh you have little faith plus are those who have never seen and still believe and whatever but uh, then, then the other part is now as a non-Christian and kind of a blasphemous, you know, atheist, me and Arn went to Walmart this weekend and we saw the Easter bunnies, chocolate Easter bunnies. And in between them, there was a cross, a chocolate cross made by Hershey's. And I was like, what? yes, yes, indeed. And I was like, why would you want to eat a torture implement? In celebration, it's of like wearing a guillotine around your neck, right? That's... Yeah, I think we're getting off topic. <laughs> yeah, no, this is what it sounds like to us, P Town. Like, uh, and and I understand where you're coming from, and and I understand why people are saying off topic and why why you think this is on topic. But you, do you, maybe I'll give you the last word, and then we'll move on to two, right? Mm -hmm. no, three, three. Three. three, yeah, from yeah. two to three. Yeah, well, I, I still have to get through these other comments. So Frederick, right, go, has, go ahead. Uh, Prager have said that uh, just because something wasn't legal doesn't mean it's immoral. He has said that uh, before the 10C or the Ten Commandments was murder immoral, not idiot. Was mur was more was murder immoral, not idiot. And tell Lilith and Tomer that I love them. Thank Aww. you. We love you too. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm afraid I didn't read that or understand it very, very well. So Patricia McGill offers $10. So speaking sure of burning bushes, better. can you please remind any of my fellow Oklahoma viewers to vote Tuesday to legalize weed in Oklahoma? Thanks. Yep. All right. So everybody in Oklahoma. Can yeah. confirm from Canada. It's great. And there's no increase of crime and less uh, overdoses from uh fentanyl laced stuff so you know it's uh it's all good we, we should do a whole whole other show on on legalization of cannabis so super Tell sticker me. anton gomez thank you offers a 52 mm -hmm. mexican pesos and says pair character exaggeratedly stretching his arm forward to offer a cup of coffee okay <laughs> And Ray's then, copy. Oh, I think it was probably just like one of those a sticker. Um, a sticker. Yeah, it was a sticker. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, are we ready for chapter three? Yes. Do it. Okay. So the winner of the God Voice competition was Morgan Freeman by a few votes. However, there were a couple of good honorable mentions. But I've decided to use the voice of Bumblebee, which is to say that I'll be using all of the voices, or at least some of them. Hmm. And I'll, uh, okay. I'll flip Read back versus and forth one to ten. <laughs> one through two, what one one through twelve? That's where the section cuts off in mine. Okay, yep. let him go to twelve. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, which is weird because his name was Ruel in the previous chapter. We'll get to he that. We'll flock... get to that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he let go his on. he let his he let his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why this bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called out to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. 
And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed them, the misery of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And he said, Motherfucker, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you. That is what I sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship me on this motherfucking mountain. (laughs) <laughs> okay okay so so two more suggestions for voice of god um sail him <laughs> or, i'm sorry um i can't i can't believe i just zipped on both of the names tim curry <laughs> would be a great mm. voice of god and can't samuel L. jackson that's well, the one i just did yeah that's that samuel L. jackson vibe totally yeah. Yeah. why is god so much better when he's played by a black man <laughs> okay. What about the um, voice of God as Mickey Mouse, huh? <laughs> okay. Next um, time he does no. something really evil, use that voice. <laughs> okay. Oh, verse cool. verse one. Uh, Moses was tending the flock. So several biblical leaders have also been described as shepherds, like <clears throat> King David in Psalm seventy-eight, uh, verses seventy to seventy-one. Uh, sorry, seventy-two, and Amos in Amos seven fifteen. Ezekiel 34 describes the, quote, prophecy against the shepherds of Israel. We also find this comparison outside the Bible. Uh, Hammurabi, in the introduction to the Code of Hammurabi, is called the shepherd of the oppressed and of the slaves. We also find the shepherd simile in Greek texts. For example, Agamemnon in the Iliad Book 11 and Laertes in Odyssey Book 24. And as we, at least on me, all the Christians know, Jesus. (laughs) Is yeah, I want to point, point out that Amos is a pretty common name here in the states. You get down to southern yeah, places, they don't say that Amos. Amos. <laughs> yeah, it's Amos actually. I so have I, so I much to... to say about God as a domestic abuser when we come to Amos, but that's a long way in the future. So <laughs> yeah. I would just like to point out that I did mention when we got to Cain and Abel that there was a theme in Semitic literature and in the literature of that entire area all the way back to the tale of Inanna and her getting married, uh, the the battle between whether it was better to be a farmer or to be a shepherd and a herder of flocks. And it's pretty clear all throughout the Bible that the Hebrew people were coming down pretty hard on the side of it is better to keep flocks than to till the soil. so it's, I mean, obviously that reflects something about their traditional practices and their ancestry and history, uh, perhaps prior to Babylon and, and all of that. But it's, it's, yeah, it's a theme you run into a lot and it's definitely, they definitely chose one side in that argument and it was the shepherds. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the... And now yeah. go on. Oh. I was going to say, uh, like the Israelites uh, versus the Canaanites, like one of the first things that they would have differentiated themselves were like we were the rural shepherds and they were the 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 lowland city uh, people. Mm-hmm. Um, Somebody found a font for cuneiform in the in the comments. I love that. What? That is pretty sweet. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it should be in. Uh, it should be in. Um, uh, what's it called? It uh, uh, Tomer. Uh, the once uh, text, what it's called. once you get done with your commentary on uh, like verse six, I don't know if you have commentary on verse six specifically, but once you get to that point, in I your don't commentary. have. Okay. Uh, uh, so before you get to anything past verse six, is what I'm saying. Uh, okay. Let me know. Okay. Um, 
and the and Jethro. So uh, it's in Hebrew, it's Yitro, and he's called as you pointed out in two eighteen. He's called Reuel, and according to Midrash Nachuma Shemot four, Jethro has had seven names: Reuel, Jether, Jethro, Chobab, Hever, Kenny, and Putiel. Uh, Amos Chacham writes that it could be that he was called Reuel by his closest family and was called Jethro by other people. This sounds like European royalty. Or it could be two different stories. It has to have 700 (laughs) names. But yeah, I think... If you call me Poutier, you're looking for a fight. (laughs) Given the the, the highlighting context of this, I think it's just two stories stitched together. Um, And Horeb, the mountain of God. So according to Exodus Rabat 2.6, this is Mount Sinai. Ibn Ezra comments that it was called Choreb because of its great heat and lack of rainfall from the root Chet Reish Bet, which means dry. Uh, and now the angel of the Lord. So I have, I have a very short one. Uh, Targum Pseudo Jonathan identifies the angel as Zagnugael, or uh, more commonly known as Zagzagel. I tried to find some things about this angel. That'll but be I'm the name of my next daughter. Find. Um, and the bush so in hebrew it's sne the usual identity of the bush is the holy uh, holy bramble or in uh, latin rubus sanctus which is found in the non-desert parts of israel the name sne probably derives from the akkadian zinu a rib of palm front saadia gaon and ibn ezra identified the bush as a type of thorn bush Oh, interestingly, uh, so yeah, it is a pretty rare word, but it uh, uh, intimates Horeb's other name, Sinai, by way of a pun. Some have conjectured that the name Sinai is actually derived from the Senna. In, uh, yeah, in the ancient Near East, deities were often associated with sacred trees, but not with bushes. Uh, Rashi construes this epiphany in the humble bush as an expression of God's identification <clears throat> with the abasement of Israel enslaved. But I think that's an interesting explanation how it was uh, meant to be a pun on that. There's also a story that the, well, what you have... the mount was chosen because it was the smallest mountain and was the most humble or something. I think it's important to note when it comes to the um, angel of the Lord here, and then in verse 4 coming up, you'll see that it's used interchangeably with God, God being in the midst of the bush as well. And when it comes to the thorn bush, um, I didn't even need to look it up because you could just tell from the patterning of scripture um, it was probably going to be a thorn bush. After the fall, when it come, you know, after the fall, thorns were made. Thorns are all, often a symbol of sin. And um, what you have here is um, basically sin burning, but not being consumed. And that's the end, the angel of the Lord inside. Pertaining to this word bush this particular one the only other instance of it is in deuteronomy 33 16. and if you read that i think it's pretty clear who we're talking about here is it jesus is it jesus i, well, I mean <laughs> i i don't know you'll have to go read it uh okay well just yeah i think the it. traditional I think the Jewish traditional view Brown is that thorn, you know the on. thorns represent the pain that the the Hebrews in Egypt were under, so it's like God is with them, even when they're in distress. Um, at least that's what uh, Rushdie, I think, writes something about. The thirty-three sixteen, as... and for the precious things of the yeah. earth and fullness thereof, and for the goodwill of him that dwelt in the bush, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of the, cause I don't want to spend too much time on this, right. But, uh, in, in terms of, uh, textual history, the Deuteronomistic source probably would have been earlier and it, uh, it references very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like very simplistic forms of some of the stories we get in genesis through numbers uh, one of the best examples of this is the golden calf which i did mm. do a video on but uh the the thing is what it what it shows is you do have some sort of uh tradition there uh and with the dating of deuteronomy and in fact with uh a whole slew of other evidence we have uh 
we have the earliest traditions of Moses dating back to around the eighth century and i think it lines up quite nicely with uh and plus his usage in the in the book itself uh it lines up quite nicely with the assyrian invasion in 722 bce so i feel like moses was this character that was made specifically for the unity of the nation he serves as a lawgiver just as when the assyrians came in uh, they're, they're, one of their lawgivers was Asaradon. And if you look at the Treaty of Asaradon, I think, I think it's the Treaty of Asaradon. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's covered in here in the so-called Deuteronomistic History by Thomas Romer. Very good read. I think it was called the Treaty of Asaradon. But the parallels between that treaty and the Law of Moses are actually striking. So I think that this was specifically viewed as the antithesis to the Assyrians and when it comes to the Deuteronomy thing it's a very simplistic form because the mythology is not fully developed yet there was no need for it to until mm -hmm. of course the exile um so the they're talking about the same event though uh so it's not it's, so of course they would use that same word not really a significant in that case unless you're trying to line out the tradition history i think i i, I mean, just like to point out uh p-town i've mentioned to you at the end of last uh the last show and that the way you're using the bible is a bit more devotional and it's okay to see patterns and things in terms of just what you yourself find significant for you as a spiritual practice uh you can find any number of significant parallels, emotionally significant parallels for yourself. Um, I think because that's um, one, a matter of personal devotion and thus entirely subjective. And two, because the rest of us are not believers, um, we are concerned more with looking into uh, factually based sources. What, what did this, you know, how, how was this written? Why was this written? What did it mean? What was it referencing? That kind of thing. Um, which is a more academic approach, uh, not the approach you're going to take in, in personal devotional use of the text. Uh, but that's, again, that's a, that's a personal spiritual practice, which is separate from academic discussions about source history and, and whatnot. Well, well, for I, me, I'm just a businessman who fell in love with the Bible, was surprised to, to fall in love with it. And um, I read the Bible and I, I, I try to, of course, I'll go to outside sources, but mainly what I'll do is I'll, I'll interpret scripture with scripture. So I don't think that it's, um, you know, I, I can't remember what word you used, but I think it's perfectly fine that I see an apparent contradiction here where it says the angel of the Lord, and then it says God, and they're used interchangeably. And I want to know what these Hebrew scholars have to say about it, because throughout scripture, there's apparent contradictions that, it's, and, that, and we've that become discussed, meaningful. We've actually discussed yeah. how the angel of the Lord is basically what angels are called in the, the Jewish concept of angels is very different from the Christian concept of angels. And that the, um, it's basically the personification of God. When God reaches into the world, you have an angel because he's kind of outside of it. An and avatar of God. It's an extension of God. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's not it's like his in, in hand. The, yeah, in the Jewish, uh, in ancient Jewish theology, it would not have been a contradiction because an yeah. angel oh, is... I'm hearing a buzzing. Yeah, what is that? So, that was... Um, no maybe it's a reminder there. that we need to go back to the Bible. Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> they, uh, the as somebody... If, like, not, I don't mean this to insult you, P-Town. And, and I just may take one issue with the devotional thing. I don't think that the Bible works as a devotional either. Like, if you take it, all of it, in context, because it's immoral. But beyond that... um. The um, and I know I've been accused like by Ken Ham of being my own little god and how do how can I question God whatever, but um, it, things that are blatantly immoral like demanding the sacrifice of your child and that kind of thing are are in the Bible. So, but beyond that point, it, I, I don't mean to be uh, insulting you. I'm not, I'm not insulting you. I mean this in the nicest way. But um, can we be friends? No, I'm just kidding. 
um the <laughs> the um <laughs> like the uh, at first i was talking to arm about the things you're saying and i was thinking is he trolling because like it is some it doesn't ring true a lot with a lot of the christians i used to know but now that you're you're reminding me now of a type of christian that looks for signs that uh, in, in the old testament so you're ringing more genuine to me than some atheist who came on here to troll us uh like uh, matt della hunty's ex-wife uh she called into atheist experience and, and trolled as a christian and that's how they met but I don't oh. think I think you you're coming off to me as genuine. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not, a number a number yeah. of people have accused P Town of being a troll, and I get the same impression that that, that he's whether he's aware of it or not, he's on a journey. It's just not going where he wants. So he, we're saying we don't think you're trolling, but but okay. but but on on that on that topic, this type of Christian, and it's not the type of Christian I was back then. Jesus Jesus says in the New Testament. To the Pharisees, don't always be looking uh, for signs. You're always asking for signs uh, and stuff like that. Go on faith. So it, you're looking at every piece of the Old Testament for a sign of a cross or for an, an angel or Jesus, and, and there's thorns in it. So it's like the crown of crown of thorns. You know, just you know, it, it's it's vain. You're uh, searching, not not vain like in arrogant but but it's you're searching in vain at every little piece in, in my opinion and that's all i want to say uh i would okay. say a final point is that uh yeah before we go back to the commentary just final point that if you're reading an english translation of the bible like the king james v v version that is an interpretation so you yes. if you're going to be reading that um you're not interpreting it uh you're not interpreting it yourself you know scripture for the sake of uh, by itself you're actually reading an interpretation um, i would also have a lot to say too but i think we should probably get back to the book now. yeah yes uh and so verse five take off your sandals so and because of that uh it was forbidden to wear shoes when entering the temple mount according to talmud the hot 62b uh Hiskuni comments that this is done because moses might have stepped on something unfit to be found in a holy place or that it is a symbolic of humility and trust. Catch it. Mm. <laughs> uh, well, more likely sheep shit. I mean, he was a shepherd. But there were a uh, lot I, of cats in Egypt. Just saying. I know, but at this point, he's out in the desert with the Midianite sheep. So, but yeah, it's the whole removing the shoes, all and the point of humility, and all that. With all those sheep, so, uh, oh, nothing to do. Uh, Tom Maris, so the the commentary Talk that you about said earlier about the angel. You, it just said yes. the name of the angel. It didn't. There was no commentary about, you know, why, why, why it. No, says it just said the, of God. And... Wait, I'll, this is from. Uh, I said this is from Tagum Jonathan, uh, pseudo Jonathan, yeah. and I will just read it really quickly. But uh, yeah. uh, Lawrence wanted to make a comment on verse uh, six, uh, but it just says and Zagenugael, the angel of the Lord. That's right, it. Right. It doesn't really say. Is about there it. a literal trans? What's the literal translation of that? It, what do you mean? You wanted me to, to is, type it on the chat? No, no. What's the tr what's the translation what of the name? Mean? I think Literally, it would be like the, the messenger. Name. I don't know. I I tried to search for it and I just uh, okay. couldn't find re really a, a lot about it. Right. But I the interesting just, thing just, here is is yeah. it says that the angel of God appeared to him, so that there was a, a vision of an angel rather than a vision of God Himself in the in the flames, which would be weird. I mean, I'm gonna. The vision of seeing an angel makes a bit more sense. My version does not speaking. reference right. an angel at all. It just refer oh, it references it as no, God directly. Long. Yeah, just it just God, says God, God came out, out of the book and called called out to from the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, "Here I am." So it doesn't yeah, even reference so, the fact uh, that he's an angel two, at all. That's two. We're, that's we're, we're comparing. Two, we're comparing two, two to um uh, uh, four. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And how there's a distinction. Okay. Yeah, I mean the words, the word angel. Um, here in Hebrew, is, it uses the the word malach, which means messenger. So okay. it could, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a being. Well, yeah, the, the angel yeah, yeah. of the Lord. Well, yeah. Verse two. Verse two. Uh, well, okay. Again, re referencing yeah. the documentary hypothesis. I know, I know, but that is a Yahweh source, whereas the later part, um, ah. part of it is an Elohist source. Or well, there's it's, it's woven well. back and forth a little bit. 
Um, ah, it's possible yes, that there that, are two stories, one with an angel, one with God himself. And then, yeah, I, I mean, uh, I, don't, phrasing. I don't exactly agree with that interpretation. I, I, I wouldn't say that, that that part of the story necessarily makes sense as being exactly as the Deuteronomist, uh, as the uh, documentary hypothesis, but I would say the element of it being fragmented from several sources and perhaps the differentiation in the text, like there's the way things are phrased. I mean, even like the, you know, his father-in-law's name changing between two, you, right, right, you get, well, yeah, you get right. crazy from, differences. That from that show. source, yeah, from that, absolutely. But uh, in, in this context, and this is kind of what my commentary was going to be on here. So okay, cool. uh, the theophany, right, where God reveals himself, the text shares a lot of parallels with Joshua 5, 13 through 15 in the appearance of the captain of Yahweh's armies to Joshua before the battle of Jericho. Now, I don't exactly agree with Van Setter's dating exactly here. He aligns it in a way that I'm not too certain about. But in terms of the parallels, there's actually quite a few. So both accounts introduce the recipient of the Theophany and the location, Moses at Horeb, Joshua at Jericho. They then proceed immediately to the narration of the Theophany in which the emphasis is placed upon Moses slash Joshua seeing something unusual that they choose to investigate. In both cases, the language of the vision experience is used. Both stories develop toward the climax in a similar way. Joshua by direct confrontation of the stranger, Moses by a more cautious approach of investigation. In both cases, the deity in the theophany identifies himself and issues the same command. Put off your sandals from your feet for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Now, there are differences. One of the differences is the order that these things happen in. But I did want to point that out because this kind of goes into what we were talking about before with having these traditions from a deuteronomistic source and then adapting them in a way to write a very detailed mythology or uh, I guess uh, detailed, what's the look, word I'm looking for, uh, ethnography of, mm. of the Israelites. So that is my view and i think that because of that it would make more sense as a singular source here in these first six verses at least mm -hmm. which is why i want to comment on those six verses but yeah that's uh that was my my point okay are you ready uh, for the next passage no no i have i have some more sorry uh now eight land and milk and land of milk and honey so Professor Yehuda Felix writes, the honey, which, which the land of Israel is flowing with, is the milk of cattle, goats, and sheep that reside at the end of fallow fields located in the mountains and deserts. In Egypt, with its almost desolate deserts, milk production was very limited. The honey describes all the sweet fruits of the land that produced honey, dates, figs, grapes, and probably carobs. Chazal identified the honey in the Torah as date honey. Hmm. And the milk so definitely yeah, an allegory no. in this case. There's a prime now example I'm right there. Now <laughs> <laughs> um, And the home of the Canaanite. No, hold on. And the home of... Yes. Uh, just a second. All right. So Damien McLagan, uh, $6.66. Longtime r and Raw enjoyer, first-time stream viewer, enjoy the devil cash. Thank Ooh. you so much. And then Super Sticker, too young to feel this old, gives $3 and says, hands, hands doing the sign of the horns with sparkles around. Thank That's you. That's a sticker, Ooh. I think. And then McCrennan says, uh, I guess this is a dresser of P-Town and all Doc Sledge. And all Doc Sledge recently said something that made me think of you and the group. It was something like, when we allow our faith to dictate history, we betray both. Mm. Oh, I like yeah. that. That is a good one. I'm going to borrow that one, I think. Yeah. Um, I think there's a bit more commentary before the next reading. I Yes, I uh, have a final one for Home of the Canaanites. So the Septuagint and the Samaritan Pentateuch have the additional people Girgashites after the Perizzites. Mm. Uh, the seven Canaanite nations also appear in Deuteronomy 7.1 and Isaiah 3.6. That's it. So, so the the list when it lists the, the the nations, the Canaanites, in some part places it it has, was it one, two, three, four, five, and some have six. Here it's six, and the, the well, including said, Canaanites, that Girgashites. 
Oh, you think they they, they add a sixth? In, in they added such, the Gergesites there. Yes. Right, right. But I'm saying in general, it's it's interesting. General, it's some seven nations in the Bible. Yes. Oh. Yeah, and over here only five only or six, 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 as you said. Six. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Somebody is writing in the comments with Icelandic text, and I quite so, like it. The only way you can tell the difference is it is that they have a, they have letters for th that we don't hmm. have. They got two letters for th, uh, and we used the th sound, but we don't have a letter for it, not even one. And Iceland we used has to. two. We used to have the letter thorn, and I think his thing is that he writes English. And he replaces th with that that letter. Yep, um, I was gonna I say I was around, excited for a second because I speak a little bit. I of think Swedish. he plays around with the switch. I think at one point he used one letter because there's two. There's actually two different letters in Icelandic. One for th, like in uh, you know thought, and the other one for mm -hmm. like th in mm -hmm. the that. And I didn't mean to take us the, off topic again. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he switches between That's the two. It's tonight. interesting. You can read it. You just have to like change your head for it. Change yeah, why don't we just adopt that letter? Because we need one. Because it, it. Yeah. I I invented an alphabet when I was a kid because I, I and I wanted I created letters for T H S H C H and O W because mm -hmm. I didn't see a need for making letter combinations like that. <laughs> or that F would be what would happen if English wasn't a mutilated bastard language of colonizing and colonization on both sides. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> you want to talk to me about that? I can tell you stories about how my kids have a hard time understanding the difference between the three different Fs that we have. F, P, H, and G, H is a nightmare to explain. This is from the French. This is from the Anglo-Saxons. And this is from <laughs> Latin, blah, 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 blah. And, and, like, and the G, H probably was pronounced more like a ch. Sounds. Yeah, but see, we don't yeah. do that because so instead of Americans. night, it would have been Nacht instead of actually uh, a night. Cut. It'd be cut, just like when they do Knut over in uh, Scandinavia. There are lots yeah, of yeah, so night as in like day and night. Topics, boys and girls, knit, topics. Nacht. But if it was a night as in a night Bring and a day, it would be Knut. Guys, we need to Lawrence, move on. Sorry. Lawrence is gone yeah. right now. He said it. There we go. Okay, okay go continue. Uh, All right, you got, you got the. Yep, I read the comments. So we can <laughs> All right. Continue. All right. Xerxes, hit it. All right. Okay. Are you guys ready? Making sure. Yes. Bring it, right. baby. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said, And his name is John C. <laughs> 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 I feel your pain on <laughs> He said further. You win. Thus, he said further. Thus, you shall say to the Israelites, I am, it has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus, you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever and the title for all generations. Go and assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have given heed to you and to what has been done in, to you in Egypt. And I declare that I will bring you up out of the misery of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to your voice. And you and the elders of Israel shall go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us now go a three days journey into the wilderness. Sands four years. So now you know what Mickey Mouse would sound like if he was packing heat. Yeah, that was a great reason. This Mickey. is the excuse version. So um, that we may sacrifice Lord. to the Lord King, our God. I know, however, that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless compelled by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders that I will perform in it. After that, he will let you go. I will bring this people into such favor with the Egyptians that when you go, you will not go empty handed. Each woman shall ask her neighbor and any woman living in the neighbor's house for jewelry of silver and of gold and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and your daughters, and so you shall plunder the Egyptians. Hmm. Uh, okay, so um, sorry, I did verse have, 14 here. I, I, uh, yeah, sorry, I did have some commentary also on the divine name thing. Uh, 
so uh, yeah. yeah um so you want me to yeah, start you, you, or you, uh, i mean i just have this one note and then i'm sure you have more for the passage overall so i'm gonna let you get into that afterwards uh so okay so a lot of the time this is attributed to an e source and a lowest source because the argument goes that they had to reveal the name because the name wasn't revealed earlier in the e text but yeah. first of all that's in a very obscure way of putting his name and secondly if we this is from van setters if we attribute this text to j in which the name of yahweh and his self-revelation to the patriarchs is beyond question uh so that, yeah then how are we to explain it the answer to this conundrum lies in the prophetic tradition in ezekiel 25 through 6 this text specifically indicates that god appeared to the israelites in egypt as yahweh for Ezekiel, this is the true beginning of Israel. He does not recognize the patriarchal traditions of origin. The Yahwist of the exile was faced with this text, and therefore has God through Moses reveal a new the sorry, reveal a new to the Israelites the name of Yahweh. But at the same time, he affirms in the strongest way that the deity Yahweh is in fact the God of the patriarchs. So the uh, the attribution here to E is unnecessary if we date this at a time when that was already it, when it was already viewed that way. So mm -hmm. in a time, of course, after Ezekiel. So yeah, you, you don't really have to do that kind no, of. No, it's thing. and that I I suppose would probably qualify as priestly source. But I mean, it makes a lot of sense when you take into account the hypothesis of this being assembled on the return, or you know. A, from exile in Babylon, and they're trying to stitch together disparate elements from whatever text survived. And so yeah, you're, you're bringing it together like that. That's the, this is the moment of, this is why it's it's always been the same harmonization. The one thing that I would add, that I would add to that is, yes, like, you know, post-exilic, but also parts of it were exilic yeah so yeah that's the yeah thing no would. you're right the priestly yeah. source would have been partly exilic because um well they were trying to preserve the memories of people who were actually there for the earlier um rituals yeah, it gets, it, and it ceremonies and all a, that it's yeah the whole yeah you know, there's it's a big complicated messy topic sources are not one person in this yeah. it's just it's, it's more like eras and yeah it's complicated but, but anyway okay um, verse 14, uh, I am who I am. In Hebrew, it's Eheye Asher Eheye. Uh, and several commentators... No, 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 like you're mispronouncing as... it. You're mispronouncing it. It's, I am what I am. Hey, hey, hey. No. <laughs> <laughs> like a... no, no, I'm doing Thank it wrong. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, not, that's a bad Popeye. Okay. I am okay. what I am, 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 what I am. What I am. Can I please oh my do my gosh, commentary yeah. now? Thank you. I don't know, Bomer. I'm not <laughs> do sure. Do you not okay. have Popeye in Israel? We do have, but I don't really care about man. that. <laughs> um, so, Sorry. several commentators, such as Ibn Ezra, Rashbam, and Chizkuni, wrote that the name of God is Eheye, which means he will be forever and can fulfill any promise he makes. According to the Talmud, Berachot 9b, God told Moses, I was with you in this enslavement, and I will be with you in the enslavement of the kingdoms. Maimonides, in Guide for the Perplexed, Book 1, Chapter 63, writes a philosophical interpretation of the phrase. He writes, This phrase, therefore, is the expression of the idea that God exists, but not in the ordinary sense of the term. Or in other words, he is the existing being which is the existing being. That is to say, the being whose existence is absolute. Yeah, the the interpretations here that we get aren't too far off from that. Like, yeah, you mentioned, you know, the one who endures. I mean, you used a different word for it. But yeah, the one who endures is also another one. He who brings things forth. There's a whole bunch of interpretations of this. But of course, I'm, 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 I have a feeling that the p town is going at some point you know whenever we're uh done with this part of the discussion but i feel like there's going to be a reference to john where in the gospel of john jesus says he has a lot of i am sayings and mm -hmm. the of course the reference is of course to this verse to the theophany and jesus speaking to a jewish audience that would have been perfect like they 
completely understood what he was saying in the Gospel of John that he was God. So, which is, yeah, I mean, but the fourth gospel, yeah, 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 it's it's far later, but it's. Uh, I, I think later. this is this is a fair bone to throw to P Town. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was just my they're, thoughts they're on not, what P Town would uh, say, but I don't know what he's actually going to say about it. So correct yeah, me if I'm wrong, just, there, P Town. Yeah, so I think Tomei just a uh, second uh, one one quick thing. So Tomei, you brought the interpretation that it's the name of God that means I will, in, you know, I will keep my promises, sort of thing. But yes. there's also one other opinion, I think, which is uh, yes, Ramban, which is, how do you say that in English? Nachmanides, something like that? Uh, Nachmanides. So rather than my, Nachmanides. Nachmanides, yes. yeah. So I think he says that, it, like, God is saying, you don't need to know my name. Just let, just, they should just know that I will be there. Um, that, um, yeah, I will be there with them throughout all their sufferings. And when they call, I will answer them. And so it's not necessarily an actual name of God. Um, I... That's his opinion. Yeah. yeah, it's well, the, the, I believe there was still the tradition of the true name of someone giving you power over them. Um, so God giving his true name, you know, much like the Fae or ancient Chinese, mm. uh, you know, it gives, it gives you some, um, you know, uh, not total power over him, but you can kind of yank him a bit, I guess. And what uh, was his that. name, Lilith? You're the one with the sound. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was John Cena. <laughs> I have to say, this is the most fun Bible study I've ever been a part of. Like, let's just be honest about that. I did, I was a Christian for 30 years. I have studied a lot of Bible in my day. And uh, no other Bible study came with Wookiee Sounds or John Cena, so. <laughs> but also, legitimately, I did want um, uh, Pete Towns' uh, yes. thoughts on this. I, 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 uh, I want to finish uh, my commentary here. Uh, verse 16, the elders of Israel. Uh, Rashi comments that the elders of Israel are, quote, those uh, singled out to attend meetings, i.e. the leaders, uh, according to Yoma 28b. If, however, you should say that the text means old men in the ordinary sense, I ask, how was it possible for him to gather all the old men amongst a male population of 600,000? I see Rashi laughing. No, I see uh, I'm going to keep my comments it's to myself. It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> what was, what say, was your when question? God I gives that you, part. When, when God gives you lemons, anyway. <clears throat> what so was the 600,000... Question: I missed that. Sorry. It, it was um, because the number of, of men of war given at the at the Exodus is six hundred thousand. Uh, honestly, a, clearly a very inflated number. Um, but yeah, and then how would you call the old men? Although, depending on how old, they may not may not count as men of war. So again, it's it's another way in which the numbers given, you know, are well, I ran like, a, clearly inflated. I ran a population. My friend and I ran a population um, generator on that, and I, I didn't see any inconsistencies. But it's not really a topic of my interest. We'll get to it. Y you know, yeah. like, yeah, did they have six kids each in the generator? Oh uh, no, we used the baby boomers um, rate of population Numbers. growth, yeah, which uh, I well, think is fair. Yeah. Uh baby boomers had modern medicine and vaccines but for their kids at least but uh it sure. when um i know if you take it as 600 men of war and uh then the number ratchets up to three million uh because you know you also have women and children and old people uh and that um as i said last time uh colonel ingersoll did the math and figured they'd have to have 65 babies each so uh, I am not doing right. that. Also, how long? How long did you give from to go from seventy to six hundred thousand plus? Um, I don't know if he gave it the four hundred years of the oh. prophecy or the two hundred and some odd years that you gave. Two hundred and ten. Thank you. Uh, but yeah. that would obviously only make the and that the just and that is worse. just the men. And that is just the men. You need to include yeah. also the the females and the, the children as well. The slaves. Yeah, well, yeah. The so starting number is supposed to be an that many number. I'm, I'm, but, yeah. I'm just, I'm not having a, I'm not having 65 children. I'm not doing it. Yeah. Come on, give it a try. Oh, 
Well, you know, I, I want to know any a... guy who would want to have sixty five children. No, his lady is yeah. There's what's nightmare. his name, uh, Mariah Carey's insane. ex, who has twelve, and he says God's going to tell him however many. Nick yeah. Cannon. Nick Cannon. Now I know why. Go. That's why yeah. their exes. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Um, I, but I want to circle back to to Lawrence's question because uh, P Town, this seems to me to be a fair a fair comparison to put Jesus right here where he says I'm the great I am because there's several there's several verses in the New Testament where Jesus says that he's the I am and he's identifying himself as God I am I am has sent me to you you know ex, uh, Exodus 3:14 I'm looking at it right now and like not to be confused with uh there is a great I am rapper maybe and, and will I am you know, will I? Yeah, will I? Will I, I am. There, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. So he found there. Rapper, yeah. Well, Jesus himself refers to himself as I am. So I don't know. Yeah, that's what we're. we're I don't want to dare bring Jesus into this. It might get blasted. But you did. Or Abraham was I am. <laughs> already. Correct. And, well, know, he says, I, I guess that as Barely. Jesus is talking about how he Jesus violates the very first commandment when he when he puts himself as a second god before god because he describes himself as a, he's this is a mortal being he was created before creation but he is a creation he is depends. he is not god he is of it god. depends on your interpretation it depends yeah. on your interpretation yeah, yeah but you. jesus always only ever described god as someone else somewhere else who knew things that jesus didn't know and so they're not the same people jesus admits this over and over again so Jesus is a representative of God, but he's God's doorman. He's the one that decides whether you get into God's party. So yes, we should logically, that's him right. than I think the, even okay. that's the even that was mentioned. Religions out there is that some believe this one, some believe that one, some believe this, and that's why we have the conflicts we have today. So, I mean, you're well, right. And but... let's remember, rivers of blood ha were shed in the first uh, in the fourth century over which interpretation was the correct interpretation of the divinity of Jesus. So yeah, you know, we... the Crusades in the 10th century. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, no, in, but and in the, the Nicene Convention, already... you know, in the Nicene Convention, reportedly uh, punches were thrown over this topic. Yeah, to Santa, uh, apparently. Yes. Um, <laughs> so that, like that Merry Christmas. Have a knuckle sandwich from Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, I, guess, oh. I guess when we All get right. to Luke or whatever, we should bring not, was not we a bishop, cycle but not a either, either so way. That's, that's either like way. George and the cherry tree. But yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, I did want to hear uh, P Town's uh, response. So, because my, my, so do you in this verse, uh, in the d revealing of the divine name, do you see Jesus explicitly here? Or are you of the opinion that Jesus was simply making a reference back to this? I, I believe, yeah. I, I And this was um, an assumption that I had actually until just the other day when I read this before the Bible study that the angel of the Lord is Jesus. It was just something that was hinted to me uh, before I think it was um, um, Genesis 22. There's a similar thing going on. I just wondered, you know, I don't want to, I, I just kind of make note of it. Here, I think it's objectively clear according to scripture. And then, and then because you see that where you have the angel of the Lord and then just the Lord himself, a verse, uh, two verses later, and then you have God say, I am that I am. And Jesus himself says, verily, verily, I say unto you before Abraham was, I am. Mm -hmm. He refers to himself as being God. The fact that we, you have in the well, Hebrew, he, this thing clear, of plurality in him. Um, to, to be mm -hmm. clear, he he's <clears throat> a representative of God. He is of God, but he is not God. And I would contend that. There. I would contend that Jesus makes it clear that he he is God. Depend, yeah, it depends yeah, on the gospel. So, so clear might not be yeah, the right word, himself. but he, so Jesus in Gethsemane prays to himself and asks. Not that I will, but because ye will. That's mm -hmm. why clearly we have Jesus the... is distinguishing himself from God. Although I would like to say, so I was speaking to uh, this creationist on campus, and he's a he's a great guy. Like honestly, like I love talking to him. Uh, so we, I kind of asked him basically about that same thing. So he's praying to God. Is he praying to himself? And he said straight up, yes. That is exactly what he is doing. 
That was at least honest. Yeah, so, yeah right. He's honest. Internally consistent. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's good. So. Tara is always talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I guess uh, because w- would you would you think that the, I mean you're, I'm I'm guessing here you're not of the opinion that the Israelites, the ancient Israelites who are reading this at the time would have been like, yes, this is, this is the Christ. This is the logos or I mean, what, however they would, you know, in their language, but uh, are, are you of the opinion that they thought that or not? I think Christ is revealed to us through mist as a mystery through scripture. Of course they weren't aware um i mean you have i mean they they crucified our savior or they they um literally i i you know forgive me isaac i don't know who here might be jewish but um i am I isaac lawrence is as well yeah lawrence, lawrence. Yeah. Isaac, lawrence isaac and and lawrence and tomer mm-hmm. yeah I, I don't i don't i don't mind the the christ killer monica so. are you are you, <laughs> are you jewish atheist or are you jewish do you believe yeah, in god I, so I'm you're jewish, jewish. Yeah culturally yeah. okay yeah yeah, yeah. well yeah, I, I there's just so I many <clears throat> the this essence of there being um plurality and yet singularity in the hebrew language i think in in and of itself is prophecy um but there's just i i, I do i could i could go through our scripture with you and i don't see god i think the only plurality of god that, that i can remember that's in the bible is you know in in genesis where it says let us create uh, man in our image, like and when God in our up, uh, in yeah. our likeness, right? Yeah, there's yeah, a, yeah. Yeah. So that's like us. That's yeah, the that's, example that I use to to. Uh, yeah, you know, so I think Jewish have English kind of just sees it as a kind of royal we sort of language. It's not implying. But then again, in a new but... again, you had a collection of gods. And they do exa- essentially the same thing. It's not a direct quote. Enumeli Elish doesn't say the line, let us create man in our image, but they have that conversation. I mean, it's, it's not a direct quote, but it's it. Yeah, but it's, the, the intonation is there. And then they create, just like in Genesis 1, which is different than Genesis 2, they create seven male and seven female figurines onto which they now have to they, they have to bring them to life somehow. And there's two different types of enchantments. There the, there's the old Jewish magic of the golem spell where you breathe the breath of life into the statue, which is what they did in Genesis 2 with Adam. But in Enuma Elish, there's also soaking the blood of the sacrificed God. So one of the gods, one of the immortals has to die. And the other, the figurines are then soaked in the blood of the sacrificed mm-hmm. God. And so that, this is where all, that's where all these traditions are coming from. Even yeah, in Chinese, really even in Chinese the, uh, mythology, uh, the goddess Nuwa creates uh, people not from the red earth, like Adam, but from the yellow earth. That's interesting. It's, I think, <laughs> uh, the, I think reality, yeah. it far more points to the polytheistic origins of Judaism, which uh, the, you know, the redactors and the, post exilix did all they could to hide and to put away but it still comes through in many places i can't <clears throat> wait till i get to the one um in the in one of the stories of the prophets but yeah it's it like i've mentioned to you before aaron that i think the concept of the trinity evolved in christianity for a very real purpose that it's though not perhaps intentionally it's evolved purpose in christianity was to be an idea that was necessary unto salvation therefore you could not question it and to make that idea a direct contradiction of logical precepts a thing cannot be both a and not a it's a direct contradiction of that so you enshrine above reason an irrational belief and that means that no matter what you do there's always this line working against reason and protecting you from reason that would come and, and, and like Lisa said, Lisa, the devil's harlot. Yeah, you know, I would agree with that. I mean, I mean, you first you have to the reconciliation of the obvious contradiction of you mm-hmm. know where where Jehovah says you will have no other gods before me, and then Jesus props up and says, 
well, you're going to treat me as God, but you got to get to God through me, right? So Jesus is directly contradicting God there. And so you have to you have to reconcile that contradiction some way. And how do you do that? Well, I I see them being influenced the Hindu Maybe. trinity. Well, it's, it's more like it, it's more like a, a divine priest, like in the guise of Melchizedek, uh, which is covered in Amy Jill Levine and Marx V. Brettler's book, The Bible with and without Jesus. They go over in depth the idea of a Melchizedek type of priest. So the th this isn't new in religions at all. Uh, Akhenaten, actually, from my studies, it looks like he he would he viewed himself as a conduit to get to uh, to I guess it, he was the in between the mediator between the Egyptians and his his one god the Aten, the Aten yeah. which was mm -hmm. actually his dad uh, mm -hmm. his deified father but I, I, I'm gonna get into that when I uh, make the video on it but now okay yeah the the thing I is, think I uh, a friend of religion. can I can I just try to address something here mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm gonna fail but you have Jesus and you have God and then you have the Holy Spirit and there's a certain thing about the Holy Spirit in the word which is it he never testifies of himself and so the, it's a very indirect approach where you can which causes a lot of the separations when you know in trying to understand it why god did it this I think, way i don't I think know you just i think you just misgendered one of your your mm -hmm. god in, uh, <laughs> okay uh, that is possible I think, I think the answer to that is actually hey you know that we can look into that too, yeah I didn't want to. I didn't want to say it to be feminine. No, I didn't want to say no. It. Jesus, Jesus was all about pronouns. Remember, he said, "I am he." Yeah. <laughs> Three words in a sentence, and two of them are pronouns. <laughs> but for you, mighty, for you, mighty chicken. I think the so Psalm one ten four. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I figured I'd add that. Yeah. yeah. Well, so. and, and we discussed when Melchizedek came up the mythologizing of this, which was really just a mention of an encounter with a priest of El, who is a Canaanite god and is one of the gods that eventually was compiled into the God of Israel. So yeah, El Shaddai, El there's, there's a lot of exactly, yeah, there's a lot of very good literature on this that I would recommend. But I would right. also recommend just getting back to the reading. I'm actually holding back. A, I'm holding back a lot of Tell comments. Tell me, is any more commentary? Because I want to get back to, to the book. No, but I, oh. no, I, I don't. Technically, talk for hours about this. Um, but I'm okay, can, can I do make one point though? Uh, Tippy Town, um, Lawrence. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I am getting this exactly right. So you can correct me. Lawrence it, was uh, his his parents did not raise him observant as a, a Jew. But his grandfather was an observant Jew, and they're from Russia originally. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Isaac yeah. Uh, was raised as an observant Jew in England. Yeah, I grew up in London. And yeah. Tomer uh, was was not ra was born and raised in Israel, but but not a, a, an observant Jew. He just does it as a study. And, um, actually, I I have. I have been visiting synagogues. Like I was raised to this kind of degree, but okay. very okay. cultural. So yeah, yes. Observant ish. Ish. I was reading the Torah. I would say this. I I, I think I said this uh, in in synagogues mm -hmm. and and Targumonkelos there as well because you know Yemenites. Uh, tell me, okay. tell me, Tomer. I I I know a lot of Jewish people, but they're all culturally Jewish. They're all. Uh, <laughs> they're all basically atheists like yourself and like Isaac and, and, and Lawrence in Israel. How is it? I mean, everybody, everybody learns the Bible. Would, would you say that there's a significant proportion of them that are, that are atheists, that are believers? How would you describe that? I would that? say that most Israelis are not religious per se. It, uh, there is a division a certain division between Israelis and there is the secular, which are like not not practicing Judaism. There can be seculars who are not atheists, but an atheist as well. Um, there's the traditionalists or the in Hebrew Masoatim, Masoretic, who follow tradition, i.e., they they keep uh, the Shabbat, they eat kosher, um, distance themselves between meat and milk. Um, you have the and there is also a division between the religious. So I would say that maybe. Uh, 
I really can't say for certain. Maybe sixty percent, but uh, it's it's just a rough mm. a rough approximation of secular people. Sixty percent. I mean, and maybe I, I don't. Can know. I ask for a point yeah. of clarification on this? By secular, do we mean not religious or not believing in God? Because I feel like at least not in religion. Judaism. Well, secular in, would mean that your policies, that your political policies, are not based on religion. Fair enough. Well, but what it, I'm it's, referring it's, to specifically is that it is hypothetically possible to practice Judaism while not believing that God is literally existent yes, in any yes, sense. There are, That's also true. There are like yeah. secular there, there are secular people who who like put on tefillin every morning because of uh, because it's tradition. Yeah. And mm. and and that's a that's a cultural uh, religious practice which doesn't necessitate that they personally believe that God literally existed no, and he does did all the yeah. stuff. It's I would say sense. based on the election, uh, based on the elections, like most Jews are seculars, but I, it's just a rough approximation. Yeah. Are, okay. there me- are there Messianic Jews in Israel? Of course there are. Yeah. Oh my God, I will tell you a lot about Messianic Jews. They advertise a lot. Oh. And, yeah, and they advertise a lot and Jews don't really like them. Yeah. Well, I don't blame because, you. you know, the, Jesus. No, Messianic Jews, those are the Jews for Jesus cult types. With the, yeah, so, the thing on the, yeah, Jews for, J for J used to be really big. And now I, I, it's Messianic I, Jews, but they're more or less the same people. Yeah, it's whatever. It's I've seen some of their advertising pop up even on YouTube for me. And I'm a, you know, white, non-Jewish, as far as I know, <laughs> Canadian it, Race Protestant, yeah, they're, they're and I still run into their, point. you know, oh, blah blah blah, Jesus, Israel. They're branching Jesus. out. They're, they're, they're branching out. They're realizing that the Jews don't really aren't very receptive to their ideas, so they're now just becoming That's more mainstream missionaries as well. They've had two thousand years to learn that you're not interested. It's just <laughs> creepy. I was going to say it's not a new thing. There is. Yeah. No. I was reading like history of like you know London, uh, you know, in the eighteen hundreds, Victorian times, and there was like there was this compound in the east end which was a very immigrant heavy area there was a there was a whole compound that was like the mission to the jews or whatever it was like and it was called palestine place and, uh, Sorry, what do you have in yeah. right we, we've been we've been two hours now and i'm not going to close it oh. up i want to finish this wait, chapter wait can i do so, uh, we ask one more question already one more question. Yeah, that's why we're talking. Okay. And, and also, Aaron, you haven't read the comments as well, but we are going. Okay. One, one more thing. On the la- people on, on the last video, someone commented, from what I'm understanding of what you're saying, you're saying that when you read this, and we're reading it from a scholarly point of view, academic point of view, because mm-hmm. all of us admittedly are not believers, you're saying that you're reading it in, in the Holy Spirit's revealing it to you. Someone in the comments in the last video said, well, what if uh, your belief system is Hindu and you're reading the Bible, you know, or, or, or. Oh, I know which I saw. I, I know which comment. Okay, there you it, go. That's a good question. okay. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's important to ask the Holy Spirit to be a, a participant in approaching the Bible. Um, and I think it's important to ask the Holy Spirit to to be a participant in, in everything. Period. So that that hopefully that answers us. So you're implying that you have to believe in Christianity (laughs) first. No. To be able to read the Bible correctly. Well then, uh, why would you ask a being you don't believe exists to be a participant in an activity? Yeah, and that refers. I I have a slightly different atheists and Hindus. Yeah. I have a slightly different interpretation of that. If you talk to if you're talking to any imaginary being, it can be a volleyball with a bloody handprint on it. If you talk to it long <laughs> enough, it's going to start talking back. Yeah, yeah fair Beautiful enough. Reference. And what if you're Hindu and you're reading your scriptures in the spirit? So, so like how it's subjective is the, is the point of the question. Also, what about all of the other religions that came before that, the goddess cultures and things of that nature? The yeah. story of Leviathan is even a takeover from old goddess religions that most of the time were female and they were serpents. To be fair, I think so we're throwing on too many questions. That is a point. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sorry. For that. Yeah, and I do want to be now. fair. I want to be very clear of this. I, I'm happy that P-Town is here and I don't want him to be targeted. I'm not, not trying to target. Tar- we're not targeting. Apologize if I seem that way. I, I'm not saying that you are. I don't, I don't want him to be, either by the okay. panel or by the audience. 
and I'm not saying that I'm defending him or that or that anybody is doing that. I just I just want P Town to know that I don't want that to happen. Okay, fair. Fair enough. This is a unique and I and I don't want to the minority, so we need to be extra. Yeah, we should. And I want to be courteous of you know this whatever you guys are doing here as well. I don't want to um, ruin my welcome. No, you've been Um, great so far as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Arn, can you me, pick up the, the comments because uh, I'm about to lose them again. Oh. All right. Yeah, let me run through them real quick. Uh, Wander, new member, says, Arn, where did you get that mug? How can I have that mug? I need that mug. So I I don't know. I, I, I think Plastic one day surgery. I looked up satanic beer mug. <laughs> <laughs> also, more importantly, Arn, where did you get that T-shirt? This one is sadly no longer available. I tried to buy a second Aww. copy. When I, when wait, wait. I what do you mean it's no longer available? Hello? Uh, I can't find it. on. Yeah, I, I, I tried to Google it and it wouldn't show up. <laughs> okay. That, I'll send you a link because that my, that's my merch. So. <laughs> is it really? This is, what is my merch? I, I was Googling this the other day because I couldn't find this. And I was going to go buy another one and it didn't show up. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you the link. It's definitely still on my merch store. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's post it in the description down below once we get it. Um, yeah. All right. So awesome. then Kicker White Lion offers 20 check kroner and says, I am Gandalf and Gandalf means me. Kind of like mm. this. Yeah, I should have read that a while ago, obviously. Mm. <laughs> and then I like it though. Tigra Feeden. I have no idea how to say that. If I say that I am Batman, you have to say it like this. I am Batman. Batman. <laughs> if I say that I am Batman and Batman is me, does that magically become true? Do you have an inordinate You're amount of wealth and a fancy outfit? <laughs> <laughs> the real question is, are you wearing hockey pads? <laughs> oh. I am wearing hockey pads. <laughs> and then okay. Debunk says, is it true most Jews are Jewish atheist Rather than Jewish theist, and again, I've already written in Icelandic. Yeah, so. yeah already said that. I don't. I, I would that. say that internationally, atheist, it's true as well. I would say that in most Israel, Jews are not religious. I want to say in Israel, I think twenty percent are atheist, but I, okay. I, I really can't say. I, we yeah, get that it's true. just an estimate, but I mean, you're in Israel, so you would know certainly better mm-hmm. than us. And then uh, Oana Siteste, I wonder if, is that the R, R Oana that was on here before? Yes, that's his Oana. Yes, okay, that's, very good. that's our Oana. Uh, nice to see her out there. Yep, it says, uh, question for P-Town. Do you equate the plurality of God with multiple psychological inner instances? I think she means, yeah, just to be clear, do you feel <laughs> like it's different when you're speaking to the Holy Spirit versus Jesus when you pray? If that's the uh, that's the question, um, okay. Here, I'm about as spiritual as a rock. I don't know why God made me that way, but I I'm definitely not like a lot of these Christians that walk around like they're you know stoned and with the Spirit. I don't know what that what that's about. What I what I love seeing is the Holy Spirit demonstrated through the text. Um, it is the sword of the Spirit, and um, and it arms me. Um, that's, okay, well, what that actually is is uh, the circular reasoning. Uh, it's a logical fallacy called question begging, and it is ubiquitous in every religion, not just yours. Uh, well, then Bob an says, "Bob says I can't super chat this for some reason. Please tell him that the Jews didn't kill Christ." I think it's blatantly obvious why you can super chat that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. And then Hern Weber original. says, "I'm a little behind, uh, but I wanted to mention the original baby in a basket story was about." ISIS putting Horus in the Nile. I'm not sure about that. Is that oh, story um, older than Sargon of Akkad? Actually, the oldest version of this whole baby floating on the river thing is the Syrian myth, uh, Myases. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, like, okay. it's the, it the similarities are think virtually right. nil, but Myases is the first version of a baby floating in a basket on water. Almost everything about his story is different than Moses or Sargon, but that's the one thing they all have in common. It's, it's hard to tell with Egyptian mythology, too, because um, it's like Cleopatra technically lived closer to the moon landing than she did to the building of the Great Pyramids. Egypt has had many eras in which it has risen and fallen, and its mythology has adapted 
obviously at, at various points that you have recurring figures and recurring themes obviously but it's not it's not like the the mythology at you know cleopatra's day would have been in every way identical to the theology or when the great pyramid was built like that's just not physically possible um so i'm not sure where if that is an or potential origin story but i mean i could see it it wouldn't surprise me it's the archetypes that generally remain the same because people are trying to conv convey the same messages or appeal to the same cultural mm -hmm. beliefs yes and I've, well, I've seen yeah. some some tradition where there was a great story about one character but that character wasn't known by anybody and he didn't have any cultural significance to anybody but there was another character that did have cultural significance so they just took the name of the significant character and put it on the old story and we've seen oh. that sort of thing done over and over again oh yeah yeah like That's with uh, nebuchadnezzar and nebuchadnezzar nebuchadnezzar's little pith off into the wilderness where he becomes a savage for seven years that's straight up copy pasta from the prayer of Nabonidus. They just replaced the name of the uh, Persian monarch that was the character of the story. We do and this so, to this day. Look at um, look at the Easter bunnies, chocolate Easter bunnies, and the chocolate cross. We we took that significance of that holiday and put of the lambing season and you know and put. Three. Well, go a little bit deeper. Where why is it a bunny? You know, but going back to Eostra. <laughs> Fertility. Because yeah. yeah, because because spring because of fish. Spring Jesus is a fish. Or something yeah, like. which Jesus is also is. a vagina. Yeah. And a rabbit oh. is a fish because the, you can the, eat on Friday because it's a fish. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I, I love um, that the fish is the representative of the vagina. Why would they? Why would they associate those two? Oh wait, no, I can guess. No, no. it's that specific fish <laughs> symbol. Perfect. Oh, the Jesus one. The Jesus. Oh, fish. yeah, the Jesus um, fish. It's is, obviously mermaids. So th this reminds me yes. of one story yeah. that I forgot to mention earlier when we were talking about the 600,000 thing. So apparently um, when Alexander Alexander the Great conquered uh, Egypt and, and Israel, all that bit, um, the Egyptians sued the Jews for the, the gold that they were taking out. So it's, uh, actually it's more relevant to the verse where it says and that they, the, the, the Hebrew women would ask their neighbors for gold and silver and they would give it to them. And it's like, Nipotite. were they borrowing it or were they, or were they given it? So uh, the Egyptians claimed that they were borrowed and they hadn't returned it. So they were like, give us all of this gold and silver back. And the Jews <laughs> replied with like, well, these are the, the wages for the 600,000 people. Do you want to, uh, what do you think? And they didn't reply, so. <laughs> no, never no, heard no. it called them that way being sued before, but that's an interesting point. Well, I don't know about that. sued, okay. but whatever, the idea well, that they just... came to Alexander and they were like, the Jews owe us all this gold and silver based on their scripture. Well, yeah. like, well, there were 600,000 enslaved, you owe us this amount. For I actually did want to point out that in this story, which we were just reading in verse three or chapter three, God tells Moses to lie to Pharaoh. To get the people out of Egypt. Now I don't have a problem yeah, lying yeah, to yeah. get slaves out of a place, but I'm right. just saying three this days. Is what we're going to go on a three-day sacred three journey. Days? No, we're not. We're taking everything and getting out and never coming back. But we're selling it as now. Obviously, you know the the in the story it goes back and forth, and we'll see that. I guess the rest of the if he had Jews... said yes, then they would have done that. Mm -hmm. You talk about when but the he knew they were going to say no. Borrowed. Yeah stuff like <laughs> yeah well it's exactly the same thing it's we're gonna go for three days and then never come back but we're not going to mention that part so yeah right but i think the, the idea is theoretically they asked for three days and he said no and god said he knew knows that he will say no mm -hmm. and then and then it will be that he will throw you out and so it's not like it's not like mm -hmm. after all of the plagues uh pharaoh was like okay you can have your three-day holiday now yeah, the no. Three day whole day was a pretense. Course, after, after it is a pretense, but that's my point. Is that well? Let's not, let's not get a hold a, a hold of let's not get ahead, ahead of, our of ourselves because we know that this is coming up. <laughs> let's not get a hold of ourselves. I think it was after the fourth plague where Pharaoh was like, or Ramesses was like, yeah, yeah, okay, well, I've had enough. You guys can get out of here. But God wasn't done showing off his power, so he was like, mm, no, nope, I think not it was yet. seven. I think it was seven, but I don't remember. It happened awful. several it's, times. Yeah, can't this is what happens God when happens. God has to jump to both sides of the chessboard to play both pieces. Yeah. By the way, real quick, both hard. plagues are also completely natural, and it has been confirmed to be so. And that is a cycle that happens Possibly, when the yeah. 
well, the, yeah. the various different toxicity of the waters when the Nile rises at a certain point, and that will add more locusts to come in, then the frogs will come in and eat that, and then just leads on to other things like that. I'm being very general right now because I don't have up the information, but yeah, there's I've a seen wonderful that. report about, about this. There's also yeah, the, yeah. the idea that some other time I'll explain plague, There's also the idea that each plague was a polemic against certain Egyptian gods, uh, but I'm not... Mm. Uh, yeah, that's that, something I'll we'll get to that more into. But yeah, <laughs> that would be interesting. I'd love to talk to you about that. Uh, Lauren, Does anybody sometime. know if we've already gone past this where it's going to come up mm -hmm. where Moses says, like, I can't speak? No, yeah, we will get to that. We'll get to that. Oh, that's the very next chapter, chapter we're going to read that's next week. Chapter. Yes. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Next okay. chapter is going to be wild. Great. I'll promise you that. Have we read all the I'll make sure to practice a few new voices for that one. Oana Celeste Sateste says i was trying to associate the inner trinity inner child inner adult and inner parent as the authority figure oh interesting okay interesting concept of the <clears throat> trinity yeah so once again i want to i want to thank everybody else uh, everybody that's been on here i'm sorry that i had to boot somebody in order to 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 fit p-town in but just i'm i invited when I started the show, I asked uh, Lawrence because I knew that he was studying for this, and I knew that I could think I could think of no better person at the time. Uh, the Lilith popped up, and wow, uh, okay, yeah, so she's a keeper, and then uh, Mighty Chicken, wow, and and Xerxes, damn, <laughs> his voice alone, Xerxes, and, Tomer. Yeah, and then Tomer, excuse me, Tomer came on in all shiny as well. So I'm like, okay, so I'm I'm just all really really happy with the commentary. with the people that You're I that I have. one person, Aaron, I, my wife. I know. No, no, no. And she says and someone else. Another uh, one, yes. And then Isaac somebody. joined us. No, no, another I know because everybody's telling me I'm I forgetting people him. before I can get to them on the list. Okay. <laughs> his name. Not What's to diminish every darkness, right? Yes. What? That's what I was trying to get to. I had yeah. to boot somebody, and I just had to make a harsh choice because I, because P Town is a believer, and I have to prioritize a believer. Uh, because w how often do we have that happen? You know, and I, w I want that perspective in here. So I had to ask Ivory. I was like, dude, I, 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 I hate to be harsh, but, but I need to make, I need to make space. And so Ivory Darkness volunteered to, to uh, relinquish his spot so that we could have P-Town on here because apparently uh, I, I thought that the, that the way StreamYard had this set up that I could have all these people, but apparently not. Um, Ivory has something going on that I'm going to do a personal interview with him about. He's he's doing a kind of a charity organization, and as soon as he's got that underway, I'm going to have him on uh, on uh, the Raw Men podcast to, to talk about that. So I wanted to make an apology for for to Ivory Darkness for having him drop out in, in order to leave space for P-Town. And um, I, I need to mention something regarding Ivory. First of all, sorry for taking your spot. But I'm glad that you found your calling. My wife is an attorney who represents kids who don't have parents. So if you need anything, um, you can get my Discord. So, yeah. Outstanding. Oh, fair enough. Awesome. Very Helping noble, kids is Thank good you. all around. Can, can right, I just can I just forget, add? I'm I'm really sorry about this, Lawrence. I I don't think anyone okay. noticed, but yeah. Wait, you, what? You, you didn't get <laughs> you didn't get mentioned in the people who. who oh no, no, he, to be... he did. He, he, he oh, okay. He did. It was the only got mentioned. Oh, oh, sorry. It was the first. Oh, Isaac. My bad. Yeah. Uh, did I not mention you, Isaac? He did mention you. Okay. At the end. Did he? Yeah. At the end. At the end. Yeah. Who I was yeah. talking about? We should just call you El Lawrence or Lawrence of Biblia. Yeah. <laughs> See, who I was El Lawrence. El Lawrence. <laughs> I was Lawrence. mentioning. I was mentioning this guy. Hold on. Yeah, I was mentioning this guy. Lawrence. Oh. <laughs> oh. <Nice. laughs> no credit. All right. Demonetization. It's happening. <laughs> yeah. So the only one that no, was you invited can't get, necessarily you can't get was demonetized Lawrence. unless you play more than a minute. The, the yeah. only one that was invited to be on the show was Lawrence. The rest of the team is kind of self-assembled, and I'm and I'm very pleased with the assembly that we have so i just want to make sure everybody understands how much i appreciate you lawrence is studying theology in college 
that's that's his background. Well, right? I want to want to together little... blasphemers assemble. I want yeah. to be a little more specific there. Uh, so the the general field that I'm in is of course religious studies because that's what my college offers. But I am primarily concentrating on the history of Judeo Christian religions. So that is that is my specific field. But also I guess uh, religions of the uh, ancient Near East as well. So that I guess the Mediterranean, right? That entire area. Uh, so where do you think we, you're going to go? Are you going to be focusing on New Testament or Old Testament? Are you going to go Josh Bowen or are you going to go the other way? Barnum. Me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Xerxes. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Barnum, uh, that's, that's the name I was looking for. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I am. You have to change your name to King Darius now if that's the case. <laughs> yeah, King Darius. I'm not, uh, I'm not entirely sure. I kind of like staying within. Because uh, it's all of it, right? Because I'm interested in Egypt. I'm interested in Greece. I'm interested in in the ancient near east uh all of it's just super fascinating so i'm not ex entirely sure where i'm gonna you know i feel you but i do specialization is... i think i think the yeah, easiest one for me to hard. do would probably be the new testament right because i already learned greek so uh yeah. that opens up a whole bunch of avenues for me in but you're area. also jewish so you naturally know hebrew is that how that works <laughs> oh boy of course, of course. Oh, no, if you circumcise properly you just magically it, the, the hebrew language comes to you <laughs> they give you they give you the secret hebrew lessons right before the late how to use the laser you know i could be not when i was when i was teaching Space laser. um there was a christian teacher with me and and it, on my same grade level and she invited me to see the, the the social studies portion where they were talking about religions and she and her main point of of doing this social studies portion was to say that 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 uh the bible was actually true and someone did a presentation on buddhism and there was a, a chinese uh, name there and she asked me how do i pronounce it and i'm like i'm not chinese you know, we don't all know <laughs> Chinese. Sorry, just because he's a Jew. Yeah. Yeah. My, my wife has uh, raised my sensitivity of this. We will go to there'll, there'll be like Asian shopping centers all around where we live, and they'll they'll be focused mostly on Korean stuff or mostly Thai stuff or mostly Japan, uh, mostly Chinese or whatever. And so, I uh, because we we both know that we're joking, you know. I mean, I'll I'll point yeah. to something that's in Vietnamese or that's in Chinese, and I'll ask my wife what it says. I, I only dare do that because she knows fully that I'm only joking, but I, 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 I only put up with him. I'm just kidding. Yeah, the, the, the airman. <laughs> you married him, of course. She, you she only puts up because puts up with him because I'm white and there's only so much you can expect. Oh <laughs> yeah, the, the Arab guys at the at the hookah bar that I work at, they're always asking me about like, oh, how do you say this in Hebrew? And I'm like, I don't don't I don't know Hebrew. <laughs> 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 for for anybody curious, Lawrence was my Russian tutor. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Which okay, which yeah. makes sense. I did Jews in Russia would have definitely yeah yeah. That makes more so sense. so Lawrence is you know it's not just English and Greek. I mean Lawrence was uh, always bilingual, right? You were always yeah. spoke Russian, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. my mom. I'm, you know, only told, I'm told uh, the Russian swear words. Yeah. I'm as uh, I'm as white to... as rice on a paper plate with a glass of milk in a snowstorm in Russia, and uh, I can speak fluent <laughs> Spanish, which boggles the mind of Hispanics when they interact with me. I learned You're prior to becoming a sheriff's them. deputy. Yeah, it's it's and and whereas I'm from a bilingual nation, and I only speak two languages: English and bad English. So. <laughs> Which one are you fluent in? I tell you, I tell you, I and, can and speak, Lawrence uh... can attest to this. I, I was getting so close to bilingual. I was studying Russian every day for for years, and I was I was watching Russian movies and TV shows and music and all of this, and I was getting so close to being able to understand. To, I, I had one conversation in Russian, exactly one in my life, but I was getting close, and then Putin. Uh, just ruined mm -hmm. all my interest in learning Russian, and I can't wait till Putin goes away, and I can re because I I don't want to die monolingual. I want to I want to be well, bilingual. If anything, he should amplify your desire to learn Russian in case he takes over the world. Lilith is an ex evangelical <laughs> too. Also, you can understand what he's saying in all those press conferences. <clears throat> and you don't have to rely on his. Translator. Lilith is an ex evangelical too. So, like, 
you know that that evangel some evangelicals say that they, they speak the same English that Jesus did. The came <laughs> the English. Yeah, but aren't aren't uh, uh, what accent? Well, Southern. Oh no, it wouldn't be southern. It wouldn't be southern, right? I have to do the King James, like yeah, it's gotta um, be that one. Yeah, but yeah, Aaron, uh, verily uh, I say unto thee, Jesus. You know, the Pope may be French, but Jesus Christ is English. Obviously, yeah, <laughs> Lord, uh, find it Lord, Lord, when I say the important. name because, because I am. I am. I'm gonna tell Arn something important. После пару лет ты наверное сможешь говорить по русски со мной. All right, I'm gonna need you to repeat that. После пару лет. Ты, наверное, сможешь говорить по-русски. Можешь. May говорит, speak по-русски. May speak Russian. I didn't hear the beginning. После. После пару лет. Пара, how, uh, how many years? Close. Close. Okay. Uh, so после, so it's after. Uh, so after some amount of years, after a few years, you will be able to speak Russian. Like I said, I got I stopped my studies <clears throat> two years ago, yeah. largely because of fucking Putin. Look at him! If we ever want to get off topic, we can talk about Saint Olga. <laughs> like fluently i can like like i can rattle off spanish like you know your mexican neighbor but um other languages i have like a tertiary grasp on i've always had like a kind of a thing for languages but i haven't had like the op like the access to those languages spanish i, c I have every opportunity in the world to speak it because my area is 50 percent hispanic 50 percent why 50 percent hispanic um i i literally just where have are to you? walk where, down where my in the street country are you i live in the ozarks in southern missouri and there are a I'm lot of Mexican immigrants here because we have like 30 chicken factories in the area. Is Missouri the one that just put uh, Jim Crow? Well, they have a visa practice? sponsor. Some... Do what? <laughs> Is Missouri the one who just started uh, put Jim Crow laws back into? God. Yes. I, I I no, 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 no. This Mississippi, hear... Mississippi did that. Mm. Mississippi. I'm Mississippi. surprised yeah, to hear that you're in fucking Missouri. Fucking ridiculous. Because... I mean, I, I grew up in California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas. I've, I've, I've lived along the Mexican border my whole life. So I'm kind of embarrassed that I don't learn Spanish when people have, hundreds of people have told me that I should study Spanish, but that didn't strike me as a foreign language because it's right there. Everybody <laughs> speaks Spanish. That's not foreign. That's right here. <laughs> I want to speak a foreign language. Well, you know, I'm going to learn to learn more. Okay, I got one word out of that. It's more Speaking important than that. Wait, it's very important to communicate. As a deputy sheriff, it was very important that I could communicate with all of my people. You have just yeah. impressed the hell out of me there, Xerxes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I didn't even want to start with... I when I first heard your voice, I thought you were a black man. Uh, is he no, not? I, no, I, I'm a pure alabaster. I Long know that now. <laughs> <laughs> alabaster yeah. with a bit of ivory. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, thought, I thought he was no. saying he was from Alabama. Uh, I get burned, I get sunburned <laughs> on a cloudy day in October. Alabaster? Alabaster. <laughs> Alabaster. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, but, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I used to have a really thick uh, hillbilly accent, but I got rid of it over time because I wanted to like, I, I trained in the mid-Atlantic accent that I use now so that I could do radio and stuff. And I used to do auctioneering when I was in high school too, which requires a little bit of a Southern drawl. I need to okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're 30, we have 30 you. minutes over time. It doesn't matter. I can occasionally we're, we're revert done. back we're to done. that. Yeah, so bad. Yeah, it, yeah I know. I just, I, I just thought that maybe Aaron wanted to finish or something because. Uh... Yeah, you know. So, so Xerxes, what you said about you, 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 <clears throat> cultured that accent back, dude, dude, man. I was raised in Los Angeles in like the seventies, and so like when I moved to Texas, it was like a whole different thing. You know, I'm like still like talking like this. You know, <laughs> I gotta back that shit off because I. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, no, you come on over here to the Ozarks and everybody's going to be talking like this and going to be swallowing their words and you ain't going to be able to understand the goddamn thing they say now. <laughs> they're going to oh, talk so fucking quick you don't grow all over your head, man. They, they just cut off all their words and you just got to understand syllable, man. Mm-hmm. They ain't say no word. I'll talk like boom hair. And you're going to understand that. Well, yes, that's the Appalachian Ozark sort of hillbilly speech pattern. That's right. Okay. All right. I'm going to tell you what we're working with now here. <laughs> I, I love this team. <laughs> this is I. This is why I want us all to go to like the Reason Rally or something. And I realize Isaac and Tomer and, and Peter, it would be rather farther for you. But like, it would be so great if we could all sit down and have a beer sometime. Oh. Wouldn't it? <clears throat> Oh my we goodness, have to yeah, talk be beer great. still. Remember that? Okay, um, but that hold, hold on a second. When you say that. have a beer, all right, uh, Bud Light, Budweiser, Coors Light, those don't count. Okay. Oh. Put that Drink. back in the You're, horse. We're going to be drinking we're gonna be drinking something like uh, at least yeah. Guinness. Or maybe yeah, like Guinness. Missouri has a local beer called uh, Amberbach. It's um, uh, Amberbach, Michelob yeah. Amberbach. I told That's Aaron delicious. if I came down to see him, well, I'd try Amberbach and bring just... him some backhand of God. So, yeah, I'm... I'm by the way, the, the, where, it, where in Canada are you, Lilith? British Columbia. <clears throat> okay. Oh, Okanagan right. Valley, Interior. So I'll, I'll be oh, in Alberta. It's been so long since I've been in Okanagan. Ontario. I love that area. Yeah, so, so you're, oh, so you're not in so Canada. Cool. You're in uh, Montana 2.0. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sweetie, no. You can't say that about you? BC because they, they've, they've got Vancouver. <laughs> So they count We're as West Coast. California. We've got yes. the big city. We've got uh, like desert in the valley is desert. Uh, we've got um, a rainforest on the coast five hours drive away. We've got a lot of hippies. And we have a lot of retired conservatives from Alberta who came because uh, it's a lot prettier out here. Uh, and it's, it's just desert. all mountains all the way across. Um, all right. I'm going to ask everybody to do your final thing. Uh, we will. We will meet again. We're we did uh, Exodus one in. Oh, excuse me. We're 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 going to start Exodus four now. Right? Aren't, yeah. aren't you yeah. still yeah. has two comments? Yep. Aren't you still have two comments? Be, you need to to read. I, I have. Two I comments. should be in the next few ones. Three. Yes. Actually, yeah. Ivory Darkness says, "Don't worry about it." Thank you very much, Ivory. Hey, uh, plus, I love the show on the pod. I, I, I'd love to show up on the podcast. I have a long ways to go before I start. Um, but it's good to hear that I can talk about my new dream. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of all all about that. So thank you. And then pursue all things says question for Aaron. Would you consider the God in the show supernatural to be more accurate representation of the Christian God since he is a total dick? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Chuck. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I haven't seen that. Sh- I don't it's have a lot really of good. time to watch shows. It's really good. In fact, I even have a tattoo from that show. This is the mm-hmm. Mark of Cain. Oh, yeah. The Mark of Cain. There you go. Yeah. It's a really right. good show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Just given that after, he's after season five, it's a little wild. But if you're if, if you're really interested in watching it, yeah, it gets a little off the fucking wall. But it's a lot it's of fun. mindless entertainment once, nonetheless. Once, once you get Especially. To the- my favorite episode is the one where Dean talks to the dog, man. That's that that's good. just comedy gold. That one's that's good. What, comedy gold. Uh, my the, favorite, the shape-shifting baby. My favorite one, though, is probably where they break the fourth wall and they go into our world as yeah, actors our world in where a they're... show called Supernatural. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's just so good. It's so good. You I'm named a character after yourself? How many, it's how got many 15 episodes seasons. Left? 15 seasons, yeah. Fuck, 20 ep- on an average of 20 to 21 episodes yeah. a season. Yep. Wow. Now, the later, so do... season four and the later seasons have less episodes. If some of the some of the top rated shows I might have seen an episode or two. Mm-hmm. And that's 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 maybe the most I can do. Well, Supernatural went from 2004 and ended back in 2019. And this is the first time hearing hearing of it. Yeah, no, it, you know it, it's, it was like saw, such a popular like, cult show. It was very yeah. big. Uh, I I actually didn't watch it, but it was I was aware of it, and it's yeah. It, I I feel like if you saw Dean and the Winchester Boys, like there, it might click something in your head. Like oh, I vaguely remember seeing that. It was sort of like I well, I, I, I never saw it. I can tell you, <laughs> a I, single I never saw man it. tear. <sighs> yeah. So anyway, uh, super sticker we got from Lee Spanner, uh, Spanner, I guess, two dollars pair character turning around, waving his hand, saying, "Hey, you, 
while lowering his glasses. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to explain that reference because I don't know. I, I don't get it either. <laughs> it's a description of the sticker that he posted. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ah! The, the image of the sticker doesn't get passed along just the description. Yeah. Or the, gotcha. the, the text gotcha. behind the sticker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, Lawrence, you might have inspired me to go back to my Russian lessons just because I know that there are you know, just just because Putin exists doesn't mean there aren't other cool people who speak that language. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know of any. But... <laughs> well, and you know, I felt so bad about that. I was watching so shows about people who were teaching teaching Russian. They do like their their private YouTube channels, and there were like a whole bunch of people that are doing Russian language lessons that are they're really interesting, cool people. There's this one guy, Max. I just, I just loved all of his shows, and he, he so has so much enthusiasm and everything. And then fucking Putin somehow just ruined it. But anyway. <clears throat> there lived a certain man in Russia long ago. He was big and this. strong, oh, and his oh, eyes were flaming. No, no, <laughs> no, no, we are done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody, oh, say good night. We're out. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Good night. See you all Bye. next week. Good night, everybody.